Hey guys, uh, so we have a few too many beers this week, and by the end of it, we fudged the math a bit, and our top 10 is wrong. Five and six should be swapped. Um, we don't catch it, but on Twitter, we will publish the correct top 10, and we made some like broken records. We re-recorded it after noticing it first time, but then we made it the same mistake again, so apologize in advance. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 15 of the Movie Rebrew podcast. I'm your host, Keegan Holland, and with me is my co-host, Mike Jennison. Hello. Are you ready for this? I don't know. Have you figured out your top ten yet? Yeah, I changed something this morning. Yeah, I just worked on mine as well. Uh, yeah, so this week we are doing our personal top ten favorite movies of 2017, as well as getting the top fives from all of our guests uh, this year, minus a few, and then compiling all those lists to make a podcast top 10. Movie Rebrew's top 10 movies of 2017. Nice. <laughs> um, you asked if we were going to do news this week, but there ended up being a pretty decent amount of news. Yeah, that's so, a very uh, heavy news week. Yeah, we'll get into that. But first, let's talk about the beers we chose this week. I chose Deschutes Fresh Squeezed IPA. Well, we should start with our first 14 episodes. We've drank a different beer each podcast. Mm-hmm. So for this being the end of the year, we are picking our favorite beer that we drink so far. Yeah. So I chose to shoot Fresh Grease IPA from our I, Tanya Ladybird episode. Episode 12? Something like that, yeah. It's the one that was near Portland, Oregon, in honor of uh, I, Tanya. And I choose New Belgium. Pokemon, <laughs> Pikachu, <laughs> I choose, Pokemon, I choose you. What an idiot. Nerd. Noob. I don't know. I picked New Belgium Voodoo Ranger IPA. This was in the second episode when we watched that instant classic... Murder on the Orient Express. Yes. Bad movie, great beer. Good thing uh, I didn't pick that because I couldn't find the shoots. I was like, oh, I'll just get Voodoo Ranger then. Good thing I didn't. Good thing I found him. This was buried. One left. Someone put like a other beer in front of it, but I, I, I found it. It's pretty much everywhere, so it wouldn't have been too bad if it wasn't at that place. But... Well, it was Kroger. I was there. All right. What a hassle. Oh, for one. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I'm already tasting that. I'm already smelling that grapefruit. I fully expect to steal at least one Voodoo yeah, Ranger. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you one if I get a fresh squeeze. Fresh squeeze is really good, too. Yeah. It was definitely in the uh, running for my favorite beer as well. I was thinking about it for like two weeks afterwards. Like, I really want to shoot again. But I never got it for some reason. All right, so let's get into the news. Good evening. I'm Will McAvoy. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. Good evening. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in your world tonight. Well, one, is it as good as you remember? This? Yeah. Have you had it since? Had it at the uh, Columbus Beer Festival. Mm. It's it's about what I expected. I it was a terrible pour, as you can see. Yep. And I got mostly that's you, four. That's how you should be pouring, though. Did you see that article I retweeted? Because if you don't, they let the foam get out in the cup. It gets out in your stomach, and it just like bloats your stomach. Oh. So great pour, Mike. Wow. Great pour. Terrible tasting, but good for the old <laughs> gold, good old stomach. Yeah. All right, so first thing we're going to do with the news is get into a little bit of a trailer blitz. Uh, with the Super Bowl this week, there was a bunch of trailers, and then throughout the week, Venom and Deadpool released theirs. So we'll get into a uh, little bit of a how'd you feel going into the movie? Into the trailer? Into the trailer, and how'd you feel afterwards? Okay. So let's start with Solo, the, the Han Solo Star Wars movie. Where'd you, where were you at coming in? Okay, coming in, I have talked about this a lot. I... Really not looking forward to this movie. Me too. I am. I don't think Han Solo needs a solo movie. After the Super Bowl commercial, I said, "Okay, it looks fine." After the trailer, everything else looks really good except for him. Yeah, and they're kind of hiding him as well. He doesn't talk much. You don't get a good look at his face, really. No, his hair is odd, but they don't. They're not showing it like straight up. Yeah, I came into this movie about a four out of ten excitement. I'm about the same, I'd say. Yeah, it's kind of what I expected. I, I hate his voice. I think yeah, that's what's it, me the worst so thing. Weird. It doesn't yeah, sound take, anything like Harrison take a Ford. a lot to get used to that. But the supporting cast is good. Lando looks fantastic. Well, I like Woody Harrelson's character from what I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, Lu- Lucas Glover's Donald Lu- Glover. <laughs> Lucas Glover. Donald Glover, yeah. Lucas Glover. Looks great. It looks very Rogue One. Aesthetic wise, there was a robot kind of that looked like yeah. the robot from Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is he? They said he's like a. Was he a pilot for the the Imperials? He was. Yeah, I think he was in like their academy, but then drops out. I think that's that's like the old story. I think they're gonna take that and kind of do their own thing with it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm about the same. I guess that actually, I'm a little bit more excited for it. I was probably a two. Now I'm a three. <laughs> Just because yeah. Donald Glover and Woody Harrelson kind of got the me going. smoldering look on Donald Glover and that 
big fur coat. Yeah. They should do a Lando solo movie. I know they Young should. Lando. That's what they should have done. Yeah. I bet they regret that now. Maybe they'll like tweak it a little bit with Ron Howard coming in and they because they need to get an actor coach for Alden Einreich. So maybe they'll, they'll probably make the movie around him, not make him the solo focus. And the inside of the of the Millennium Falcon looks really weird. It's like really clean. It's like white. I guess they're trying to make it look like it's brand new. Yeah, but like what the hell do you do? Do you just throw up over the walls and just smear it everywhere? I don't know. It's very strange. Maybe Chewbacca's not potty trained. <laughs> That has never been covered in any of the yeah, uh, maybe. movies. Just shits everywhere. Yeah. Um, next trailer, Deadpool two it came out yesterday. It's uh, it's mainly about Cable, who is not a villain, but it kind of seems like the villain of this movie. Maybe they'll introduce him and then he'll come and help. I don't know. But going into this, where were you at in terms of excitement? Okay, I love Deadpool. One of my favorite super movies of all time. Deadpool two, I don't know. I feel like I can't get up for it. I feel like that shtick is run thin. Yeah. Especially the Batman, Lego Batman movie, which right. kind of took that and ran with it. Right. I'm just kind of over the whole breaking the third wall. kind of Fourth wall. Fourth wall, the third wall. Um, the fourth wall, I don't know. But this trailer was funny. Yeah, it was funny. The mustache joke really got me. Yeah, that was good. Again, breaking the fourth wall, attacking uh, Justice League and Superman's mustache. I'm not too excited for this movie. I think this should... I think it's coming out too soon. Like, the good part about Deadpool 1 was, like, it commenting on tropes of the superhero genre of the last, like, ten years. I mean, nothing's really changed since the first one came out. So, I don't know. I think it's going to be a little old. Yeah. I, that being said, it looks pretty good. I say it's a movie I'm going to laugh at a lot while I'm in there, but I don't know. It's going to maybe piss me off at a certain point. Yeah. I'm like a six. 30 minutes that I'm probably going to be annoyed by it, but... Yeah. I was at a 6 going and I'm probably like, I'll, I'll go 7. I'm a little, little more excited. It made me re- looks great. It made me rem- remember why I like the first one so much, this yeah. trailer. So I, I, I'd probably be about a 7, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, next trailer, Venom. I was at about a 1 for this. Th- this is a nothing trailer. They never show Venom for 1. It just looks like... Tom Hardy's voice is odd. Well, yeah, he's doing the American accent. Yeah, and usually he just mumbles his way through it, but yeah. he's actually trying to be... Trying to be coherent. super clear. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah like you take away one they don't even say the name of the movie they just say the eyes and then V but you take away the Marvel logo and the end shot you you, had, you would have no idea this was a Venom movie I was going to bring that up yeah there's nothing about this that it's like he's like a drug addict or something I was trying to pay attention I was just so just, I yeah. couldn't focus for that those two minutes Yeah, I'm, st- I'm staying at a one with I one. doubt I see this movie mm-hmm. one maybe zero and then the new Avengers trailer for the Super Bowl. Five, five. I was five going in, five going out. Yeah, I'm like a nine for the movie, but... I'm going to see it, it, obviously, but... It looks the exact same as the first trailer. We don't get much more. I'm still excited for it, but I'm nervous that... You see Thanos a little bit more in this trailer. Yeah, you do. Brolin, man. Thanos and Cable. That's weird they got him for both. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll make a couple jokes Expe- about that. They probably will. Especially with... Well, this will be news later. Disney may be buying Fox. He'll be in... The MCU for sure, once they move Deadpool in. Yeah. So that's interesting. And then MI6, you don't have any interest in this, but I love the Mission Impossible movies. I never like really excited for them, but then they come and I love them. And this looks really good. Henry Cavill's mustache, mustache well worth the, uh, <laughs> the CGI in Justice League. It looks great. He's, he's an American, which is surprising. I thought he'd be British. But yeah, I love the cast of characters. Peg, Vin Rames, Tom Cruise. They're all great, and I'm sure this will be good again. The action looks intense as hell. This is the only Mission Impossible that's reusing the same director. Correct. Yes. Yep. Chris McQuarrie, I think, is the director. He made He's five. Make. He made five, and five is awesome. Five came out what three years ago? Yes. That sound. Twenty fifteen. That sounds right. Yeah. Wow. Twenty fifteen is three years ago. Isn't that weird, dude? Dang. How years work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then another trailer and release was Cloverfield. This was ridiculous. Yeah. The first trailer <laughs> for this movie came out four hours before the movie came out, and I guess. There's reason for that. It's getting really bad reviews. See, we were all sitting around the room when it showed, like, oh, when's that coming out? It looks pretty good. And we were all talking about how we like Cloverfield. And, like, thir- like, a, like a ne- the next commercial break, they said, you can see it on Netflix now. We're yeah. like, oh. We were talking about watching after the Super Bowl, though. We didn't, but yeah. I think it was a good marketing campaign for them. Great move, yeah. Because Judging me how bad this movie yeah, sounds. It, last time I checked, it was at, like, a 16% Rotten Tomatoes. So, like, yeah, most people, not most people, but a lot of people were seeing it right away, right after the Super Bowl, without knowing anything about the movie. So they went in with an open mind. If you do this in the theater and it just gets panned by everyone, maybe you don't get as much views. But um, this is probably a good move for, for Paramount. They already made their money back because they sold it to Netflix. So like, there's no risk for them at all. The risk completely falls on Netflix. Now, Netflix didn't buy it until after Sundance, right? I think so. So it premiered at Sundance. It probably was bad reviews. And then they realized, let's ditch it out to mm-hmm. Netflix. And not, not, not a bad move. I'm surprised how bad this movie is, though, because the first two Cloverfield movies are regarded as... Very good yeah. sci-fi movies. Yeah. 
first one's uh, found footage, which was rare at the time, I think. They, they kind of moved away from it, but I think it's a good one. And I love the second one. J.J. Abrams directed the first one, or just produced it? I think he's produced all of them. Okay. I haven't directed any I haven't of them. Directed yeah. I know Chazelle wrote the screenplay for uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. And another thing about the release is this might become more and more common. With studios just taking the taking the uh, not a big gain, not a big loss, they're just making their money back. Because Annihilation, which just comes out February twenty third, from the guy that did Ex Machina. I think it's February sixteenth. I think it's next week. I think it's the week after that. Anyways, well, why would it come out the same week as Black Panther? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, you're right. So okay. that's coming out on Netflix everywhere except for North America and Canada. So no, like North America and China. I'm sorry. So that makes me a little nervous. Even though it, people are calling it like a, like a modern-day masterpiece. Yeah, I've heard good things. So why do you think they would put it on Netflix? right? Because I guess they're banking on the box office from China and North America being the biggest to make their money. And yeah, I don't think sci-fi is that big of a deal in Europe. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe England, but I don't know. You never hear comment Europe like, oh, that's that it's premiering in Spain and France this week, so yeah. look, look out for this sci-fi yeah, movie. Yeah, the, the markets aren't huge there either. Yeah, so I think they had a tough time maybe finding an international distributor. That's possible. And they just sh- shoved in Netflix to get some money back, like you said, low risk. Yeah, but that stinks, though, because, I mean, for them, like, I, I want to see it on the big screen. It does stink for them. I wonder if they're going to get a um, limited release or something. Like I saw, I was talking about that with Mudbound. Which looks beautiful. Got not only for best cinematography. I really wish I could see that on the big screen. Yeah. It would have made a big difference in that movie. But yeah, and this is a movie where it looks like you have to see it on the big screen. For sure, yeah. yeah. Big sci-fi movie. Yeah. It, was, it was always lend themselves to being better on the big screen. Mm. And then with what I was just talking about, the Disney Fox deal might not go through anymore. Comcast uh, seemingly has outbid Disney. Yeah. So I read into this a little bit. I guess Comcast always had a larger bid than Disney. Oh. But Fox is worried that. Washington would block that deal, so they choose Disney. Okay, but because they, there's a Hulu thing that Comcast already owns a big portion of Hulu, so if they got that, there'd be some conflict there. Yeah, there's something about the deal that they don't think it would pass the government. However, uh, AT and T's trying to buy Time Warner Cable. That's getting denied. They yeah, but they're tr- Trump's trying to sue them. The Trump administration, they're trying to block that. Yeah, but I guess if that goes through, then Comcast is likely to get Fox. Okay. But I don't know if that's going to go through. Man, to outbid $56 billion Yeah. Is Disney's bid? That's nuts. Like how much more? Do, do you know? I don't know. They say Disney might actually match that offer, though. I wonder if they're going to... If this gets to like one fifty, because yeah. D- Disney definitely wants this more than Comcast, I'd say. You they would, want you the Marvel characters. So. Yeah. It, ma- it makes a lot of sense for Disney yeah. to want this deal. And it's a win-win for Comcast, because if they make Disney just spend even more ridiculous amounts of money, that's a, I mean, it's a competitor. That's huge. Yeah. What else does Comcast own besides NBC? Universal. Okay. I believe. Because NBC Universal is, is, is a thing. So yeah. I think it's Universal. That, that would make sense. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Now, what it, Universal owns Hulk? Yes. The, they, they, own, own, they own a solo Hulk movie. but They don't own the character anymore? No. Like they, they, Marvel can put Hulk in team movies, but they can't make their own individual oh. movie. Okay. I don't know why it's a weird loophole, but that's how it is. Way contracts work. And I don't know when. Like, when would Universal lose it? Because it's usually if you don't make one after a long time, you lose it. That's like with Fox and X Men movies. Yeah, but like Universal made Ang Lee's Hulk in what? Like oh four. Yeah, it was a long. Oh, I guess Ed Norton's. In oh eight. In oh eight. I mean, see a Hulk movie here soon then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Ugh. I mean, it's so weird if they have one that isn't yeah. Ruffalo. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe Logan, but Hulk. A gritty a Hulk movie. Gritty <laughs> Nyor Hulk movie. Be kind of down for that. Yeah, but somehow have Ruffalo do it as well. But not be Ruffalo. Be Ed Norton again. There's no way. <laughs> Who's Ang Lee's Hulk? Um, Bannon. Steve Bannon. <laughs> no. What the hell is he name? It's considered one of the worst movies of all time. Yeah, it's very bad. I never saw it, though. Eric Bannon, I think? Eric Banna. Eric Banna was the Aussie Australian man, Eric Banna. And then last bit of news. The writers and creators of Game of Thrones are writing a series of Star Wars movies. So I have some good and bad thoughts on that one. When you say series... Probably like three movies. So a trilogy. They're going to make like their own... They haven't come out and said trilogy, but... I wonder if it's a, a TV series, series. No, a series of films. Okay. Good. One, these guys are great writers that can weave a ton of characters and plot lines together, which in a trilogy you kind of need to do. 
two, it's a series, so it won't be one standalone movie like Rogue One or Han Solo, so you can actually build these characters more than they've done. Like Rogue One, there's zero characters in, in, in that movie. And then potentially good, these guys can adapt the shit out of books. Like, when they had George R.R. R. Martin's stuff in front of them, knocked it out of the park. Bad, when they didn't, they're real shitty. So, this could be good, if it's Knights of the Old Republic and they're adapting that into three movies, that'd be sick. You got past with them and then future, like Ryan Johnson, just takes it in a, in a weird area. But if they're doing their own stuff, I have some reservations. because they're It not might do Knights of the Old Republic. That'd be really That'd cool. be sick, because people are calling for that. Big people thing. want it. Yeah. And Disney wants to make money. Yeah, I think that, and I they, want to see that real bit. I would definitely see those, and I think these guys would be a good get for them, for sure. I think Disney realizes that the majority of people are sick of the Skywalkers. Yeah. And, and they're going away from them. Yeah. Because they came out and said this will not be Skywalkers, right? I think it was already announced yeah. with yeah. them and Ryan Johnson's trilogy. So that's good. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Hopefully uh, they stay on for all of it because Lucasfilm's known to just yeah, toss people. people aside whenever they want. So hopefully both them and Ryan Johnson can can see this all the way through and have their vision completed. I just hope they don't... We talked about this many times, but the fatigue. Hope yeah. it doesn't get to two Star Wars movies a year. That would suck. Sure looking like it I mean, at this rate. There's nothing planned after Solo. Oh, yeah. after episode nine. So you at least think a year is going to tip you off. I hope so, because that would be kind of quick to get another thing out there. But then if you go Benioff and Wise... Or Benioff and D.B. Wise trilogy and Ryan Johnson trilogy alternating a year... I think that'd be okay. If you gave it two, maybe three years, and then you alter that trilogy, and then you can come back to episode 10, 11, 12, yeah. 10 years after that, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be cool. I'd be yeah. cool with that. So we'll see what they uh, what they do from here. But yeah, you got any news? Yeah. Uh, the Director's Guild was this weekend, and Guillermo del Toro won. No surprise there. No surprise there. And the Director's Guild is probably the best precursor of any Oscar awards since 2002. The winner of the Director's Guild as long as they were nominated for the Academy Award, they went on to win the Best Director. Wow. The only exception is Ben Affleck wasn't nominated for the, the Best Director in 2012, for whatever reason, for yeah, Argo. so strange. Very odd. He won the Director's Guild and wasn't nominated, so this is pretty much a uh, slam dunk for Del Toro. Mm-hmm. I think it's well-deserved. Yeah, I think it's guaranteed. I think it's guaranteed. I mean, the only other person, only other director that's been nominated consistently throughout is Christopher Nolan, but he's been getting no love anywhere. Yeah, has he won anything? He hasn't won anything. Del Toro's basically won everything Good. inside. Nah, he's alright. <laughs> I mean, Dunkirk has directed well. I think yeah, it you'd, is. you'd agree with that. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, and uh, Richard Linklater announced his next project in the... It's gonna be... It's gonna take place in 1969, Houston, Texas, and it's gonna have to... Right in his backyard, even though he's yeah. Austin, but whatever. He said when he was uh, making Boyhood, made him think about his own childhood. And he's like, you know what? I should make a movie that takes place where I was in because the you know the uh, launching a man on the moon. Oh yeah, was happening. So mm-hmm. he's going to make a coming of age tale wrapped around the launching of the rocket in Houston, or well, rocket, the landing on the moon in Houston, <laughs> and it's going to come out on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. Oh, nice! So it's going to be a small indie movie. He said he's working on it, but he's not ready to release the cast yet. We all know Ethan Hawke's going to be in yep. it. I don't know why he's Ethan trying Hawk to hide that. Ethan Hawke is playing Neil Armstrong. <laughs> I doubt. I don't think any astronauts will be featured in yeah, it. I just not. think it's going to be kind of talked about. And he's actually asking for people, if you have any 1960s Houston memorabilia, videos, <laughs> photos. Got the right guy, baby. Anything like that. Open up my closet. I'm sure our listeners are, you know, all take place in Houston. <laughs> uh... Yeah, go uh, go send it to Richard Linklater. He wants to see it. Noise. And last bit of news. How about Black Panther at sitting at 100%? Yeah. Through 84 reviews or something like that? Wow, yeah. And Paddington 2 is 100%, 173 for 173? Something crazy. It's crazy. You have four of the greatest reviewed movies of all time based on Rotten Tomatoes coming out in a 12-month year span. 12 month span with uh, Get Out, Lady Bird, Paddington 2, and Black Panther mm-hmm. as of right now. Get Out and Lady Bird... Lost their 100%. They're they did. both at 99, but yeah, for a long yeah. time they were, they were I think up there. Lady Bird has one bad review, Get Out has two bad reviews. Who knows if Paddington 2 is going to get a bad review? It's late. I mean, it's late. I think it's already had a Toy Story 2, so now that will, now that's kind of the best reviewed movie of all time. I actually really see it. I just watch both of them. This uh, this one guy I follow on Twitter always goes to the theater planning to see something else, but then he's petting me too instead. <laughs> he's <laughs> it like four times. It's hilarious. I'm sure it's good. Yeah. I'm going to try to see it here when it comes out on home video. 
Mm. I don't think it's a movie you necessarily need to see in theaters. Probably not. I don't think there's a big spectacle behind Paddington 2. Uh, apparently, there, there might be, though. I don't know, there's man. There's something there. Something that, magical. That, uh, the pink prisoner dry cleaning scene is... Uh, Pretty electric on the big screen. Is that true? No, that's not true. What does he eat? Marmalade? That's Australia, right? Marmalade? Oh, that's jam. What am I thinking of? Vegemite. Yeah. Mar- m- Marmalade, yeah, That's probably. his big thing. Look at you. You're the uh, the, the, the go-to source for Paddington 2 information, <laughs> huh? I guess. He's adorable. Yeah, he is. People probably just get lost in his eyes and <laughs> don't even watch the movie and then just walk out the smile on their face. Slap that hundo. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to be the dick that gives Paddington 2 a negative review, too. Someone wants to be the dick that gave Toy Story 2 the negative review. Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's adorable. Yeah, he is. Got the hat and everything. Alright, that's it for my news. Alright, let's get to the uh, much-anticipated, at least for us two, <laughs> Top 10 of 2017. The way we're going to do this is me and Mike will give our top tens. We'll do four, three, two, one, and we'll alternate. We'll do our ten through six, our five through four, three. three, three? Uh, the math is, I can't think of it. But we'll alternate between getting a different amount of numbers. <laughs> My math is bad. I'm sorry. He's an English major. It's ten through seven, six through three, three, two, one. That's not right either. How do we go six, six through ten? No, seven through ten. Six through three, no. Ten through six. <laughs> ten through six. Five through two. And then we'll both say one. And, I don't know. This is a disaster. Because <laughs> four plus three plus two plus one equals ten. So okay. ten through seven. Six through... Four. Four, three, two, yeah. one. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my Perfect. God. Perfect. <laughs> First time. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So you want to start off? Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I'll give some stats for mine first. I have one Best Picture nominee on my list. I think you know which one it is. Um, my number one was very easy to put on there, and then two through ten, man, that could go in any order, really. Okay, I should preface, preface, preface. preface. Yeah, I was right the first time. I should preface by saying that I struggled so bad seven through four. I've yeah. been flip flopping that even up until I wrote it down a piece of paper an hour before Keen came over. I don't feel good, but I've convinced myself on this order. And we should be clear we're not saying these are the top 10 best movies of the year. These are our top 10 favorite movies of the year. Mike is very much prestigious biased. I'm very much comic book biased. I like action movies and all that summer movie nonsense, and Mike is a smaller movie uh, kind of guy. So. Uh, <laughs> So we'll, I think we'll have a really different top ten. I think we'll have very different top ten, especially after what you're saying right now. Yeah. Um, I want to give my criteria, because this actually helped me okay. as I was weaving through this. So I got three cri- criteria. First off, did I enjoy it? How was my theater experience? Was I engaged throughout the film? Two, did it stick with me? Was there some greater message that I really enjoyed that I've always been going back to thinking about? Mm-hmm. Um, do I actually remember the plot? Because there's a lot of times that I just totally forget about a movie. And I think that's the best way to tell if I like a movie or not, if I can actually tell you the plot three months later. And last criteria is from a technical standpoint. How does it look? Visually good. Mm-hmm. Score. Cinematography. My pretentious category, if you, yep. if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado... Well, I wanted to avoid recency bias. because That's tough. It's tough. It's very tough. That's why I try to rewatch a couple of them. Hmm. But I I made sure throughout the year to, to get down my initial thoughts leaving the theater. And I'm trying to stick to that because there's reason I had those feelings coming out of the theater. And time should not take away from those. So, Mike, without further ado, you're number 10. If you I, want to give some honorable mentions up, up front. Should I go last? Maybe you can build the suspense. Okay. okay. <laughs> N- number 10. I would have felt so bad if I didn't put this on my list. Baby Driver. I don't know if I've had more th- fun in a theater in my life than watching Baby Driver. Saw it twice, actually. The only thing negative I can say about this movie is there's probably one character that probably hangs around too long. Yes. But other than that, I mean, that first scene, the first ten minutes of this movie... Electric. You're locked in from the word go. Like, did I enjoy my time in the theater? Yes. Very much so. From a technical standpoint, out of this world, Green. He should get some director love at these awards that he's not getting. He does. I feel like him getting three editing... Sound editing, sound mixing, and editing. Mm-hmm. 
that still, you know, yeah. that's that's still for him. Got three nominations. That's pretty freaking sick. Because this is a movie that doesn't really. No, get you'd those never see this in no. previous years. No. Yeah, and like, for, I don't really know, understand the technique behind sound editing and sound mixing, but it's probably among the greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd think, right? You'd think. I mean, just the editing the, to a song perfectly each time. Nuts. Each turn. It's just yeah, like it's crazy. And they did a smart thing by releasing the opening scene on YouTube. Yeah. Shortly after the release of the movie, to get people like, this is what it's all about, dude. That first scene's incredible. Yeah, if you, if you see that first sound, I don't know how you don't want to go see it in theaters right. then. And then the soundtrack in general throughout is great. Mm -hmm. A very memorable character in Ansel Egort's uh, Baby. baby. Yep. Almost forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> name of the movie. And I, I love how he's a hearing deficit and he just uses an iPod. Mm -hmm. Just very... Um, it's, good, it's, good, it's, it's memorable parts about the character. Good character traits. Yes. <clears throat> so, I guess if I... Yeah, I already went on my one negative <clears throat> thing. Uh, number nine. This is surprising. Shape of Water. I almost didn't have it in my top ten. But then I remembered just how good Sally Hawkins, Richard Jenkins are in this movie. The dance scene alone has kept this in there. I think it might be the best active performance of the year. It's really, really close. This movie looks phenomenal. It deserves the 13 nominations. Everywhere it got it, rightfully deserved. So I enjoyed the movie while I was in theaters. From a technical standpoint, I liked it. But then there's it just ran into such predictability for me. Yeah, it did. And it's not aging well in my eyes. The trailer doesn't help that. No. And the just the lack of originality, I'd say, in it doesn't help it either. But yeah, but the, the things you said up top, I totally agree with. The, well deserving of the 13. Beautiful. The dancing scene is one of the best scenes of the year, for sure. Incredible acting all around. Yeah, this is a damn good movie. And Guillermo del Toro knows how he knows how to freaking direct his pants off yeah and i think you can always say the story is the biggest part that's missing yeah and here it's once again rings true number eight i freaking love this movie and uh, the post no fucking way <laughs> all right go ahead <laughs> i think that's enough for me i mm, oh boy <laughs> I mean, I'm a 70s history American nerd, so it's kind of got all, all my senses taken. Like, beautifully acted all throughout. My last time makes poor Boston accent, but at the same point, that bad Boston accent is kind of charming. <laughs> he fucking plows through it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still Tom Hanks. He's still charming as hell. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tears parted nicely. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I really, you know I enjoyed watching it when yeah, I was in yeah, theaters. Yeah. I was laughing my ass off. Uh, did stick with me. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, the, the free press thing was really something. Yeah. I actually, Very relevant. To the did, I, did I tell you that the next morning I tried to buy a Washington Post subscription? <laughs> <laughs> but it cost $150, yeah, so I was it's like... Yeah, it's freaking expensive. Yeah, dude. I was like, oh, that's not, that's not smart. And from a technical standpoint, there's some really cool shots in this movie. The yep. one of uh, Odenkirk, how it, like, there's the whole picture, and then it zooms on him at the telephone pole. That's just yeah. one that sticks out to my mind. Or the printing press at the end. Yeah, and then the uh, scene with uh, Meryl Streep walking down the uh, Supreme Court steps. I mean, it wasn't for me. I think it was a little on the head, but it was, it was a cool shot. A little too on the head for me, but yeah. I feel like it, it's very fitting for the time. Great message for what we're living in right now. And also, it's really entertaining. And I love that uh, love that hustle and bustle of the journalism life. And you love that John Williams score. <laughs> yeah, not not a good John Williams score. No. Number seven, Keegan loves this movie. <laughs> Wait, never mind, sorry. Number seven. <laughs> I, I'm looking at this list, which was an old list, and I, this is the right one. Number seven, Get Out. Woo! <laughs> we talked about this a little bit last at the end of the last episode, but how he blends racism into a great horror story, just like little subtle white suburban racism, yeah. is great. And I think... Um, like, I think I've said some of the stuff that they say, like, oh, shit, what am I doing? Like, why am I saying these things, you know? Like, yeah, like how whites look at black being trendy and how we don't think we're being racist about yeah. that. Yeah, just saying, like, awkwardly saying, I love Tiger Woods. Like, yeah. that's racist. And saying, like, I would vote for Obama a third term. Like, who, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. I know, and like... It's like, trying to appeal to them, it's like, they're human beings. Like, treat them like human beings. <laughs> yeah, I love how it's just like, it's a, it's not as an attack, but it's like an eye-opening... Eye if, if, even if you don't think you're racist, there's a lot of things you do that are racist. Yeah, yeah. And this is kind of an eye-opening experience right. from that perspective. And then it's wrapped all in a just a beautiful horror movie that's just wickedly entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. Funny and terrifying. Funny and terrifying. Kevin Keener really upsets me yeah. during that movie. Um, I had a real... I went back and forth on where to put this in my rankings. 
I had it high. I had it on my top ten, but I'm like, I gotta bring it back in. And I'm happy where I put it. I had a similar thing with, with Get Out, but I'll get to it you know, later. Yeah, I ha- I, I'm happy where I put it. I, I hope it wins Best Original Screenplay. Yes. It was definitely the best original screenplay. Totally original. And yeah, I'm excited to see what he's doing in the future. Mm-hmm. Peel. Sky's the limit. So yeah, that's my 10 through 7. Okay. My number 10, I'm going to go with I, Tanya. Uh, a great biopic. Uh, very funny. Uh, I was laughed my ass off during this movie. In large part to the security guard. Yeah. But yeah, a true story told in probably the best way I've seen in a long time. Kind of like the, uh, what's that narrative you can't trust? Oh, uh, in, oh, uh, uh, unreliable, unreliable narrator. narrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the, the unreliable narrator of all four of them, really, uh, security guard included. And this is a story I knew very well, but it still kept me on the edge of my seat with, in terms of how much she got screwed, which was, because people paint, Tony Harding in a, in a bad light. And, in a terrible light. And still, even after this movie. But, like, yeah. to see how it maybe really went down was really fascinating. And I really, really enjoyed this movie. My favorite part about this movie is they didn't answer any questions. <laughs> no. Like, there's a quote at the end where she's laying on the mat, and she's like, is this what actually happened? And it's something like, what is really history? Yeah. It's a story you tell yourselves. So mm-hmm. it, really, it was really good. Yeah. And I like how they just didn't give any concrete answers, because the greatest thing about this story is the mystique behind it. Right. All the rumors. Mm-hmm. And they kind of tell her side of the story, but at the same time they tell everyone's side of the story. Right. And also, you said you were getting sick of the Deadpool breaking the fourth wall. This does it in a really good way. They don't overdo it, but when they do it, it's hysterical. Like, I never did this. And she cocks the gun and shoots him. There's only two when they break the fourth wall. R- really. And, her, and Alice and Janney. Alice and Janney. I haven't been in this movie for 45 minutes. Which both kill. Kill. Yeah. yeah. So good. In the theater we were in, killed. I was dying at both parts. Yeah, yeah they don't overdo it. They don't mm-hmm. use it a cheap gag. When they use it, it it's, it's right. Because it's important because uh, Sebastian Stan's character, he's telling a part of the story that she doesn't agree with. Right. So it's yeah. funny she when she looks it over and says, and like, says that. Yeah, yeah that's just, that's just, it's just smart. Yeah. And it didn't get original screenplay. Which is nuts. And, and she no, watered it. Yeah. And no... Uh, no best picture, which I was a little disappointed with. I th- I love this movie, and I think it should got a lot more praise than it did. Hopefully, Allison Janney can bring it home. Margot Robbie, maybe. So certainly one of the most entertaining biopics I've seen in yeah. a long, long time. The uh, the Goodfellas for ice skating was the appropriate uh, yeah. line for it. I thought it was kind of corny at first, but when I saw, it, I'm like, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. Number nine, I'm gonna go with Logan. Um, I've been with this character since I was five years old, and this franchise this character could not have ended in a better way it's a western comic book movie which you never see and you may never see again the way this is told had to be r-rated and at times they do do go a little too far they say too, there's too many fucks to start this movie they, they, they really are hammering it that it's rated r and it feels unnecessary at times but overall the story is great uh the young mutant laura is a standout in this movie i hope they do something with her later I cried like a little baby when Hugh Jackman died. Spoilers for all these movies, by the way. <laughs> if it's too late, whatever, sorry. But, uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman is the man, and this was the perfect way to send him out. Now that Disney bought Fox, they may bring him back. I hope they don't, because this was, this was uh, great. This was, yeah. Yeah, Patrick Stewart was great in this. Top to bottom, great performance, great story. Nominated for Best Original, or Best Adapted Screenplay. Very Rightfully, deserving thank God. Yeah. If there's ever a super movie that deserved a freaking screenplay, now it was this. Yeah, this uh, this franchise is very hit and miss, but man, they nailed it with this one. I think what hindered this movie in my rankings was I've never seen a movie with Hugh Jackman. Yeah, as Wolverine. as Wolverine. Right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I could only imagine if I was there at the what it's all seven seven movies before this. Yeah, he was something in. like that. Seven or eight. Because like when he when he shaves it down to the chops at the end. Yeah. And you kind of and at that point you know yeah. he's gonna he's out. Mm-hmm. You know he's getting sick. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's emotional. And I yeah, and I never even saw a movie yeah, before I was, that. I was born. <laughs> but the movie does work if you've never seen a yeah, X-Men does. movie. It does. Coming from my It's very like standalone. They and, hint to some X1 stuff, but very solo. Yeah, and I went in knowing he was going to die. Oh, so okay. if, you, if you heard that spoiler and said, well, I don't feel like watching Logan, yeah. I knew it, and yeah. I still had it's my heart ripped out. She turns the, the cross on as an X. Man, it just ends so well. Yeah. And uh, the scene where he's in the hotel room and Professor X is having a seizure... One of the most brutal, like, yeah. great scenes of the year. And he just, he, like, puts his claws down, but then puts them up into the person's, like, skull. Oh, it's amazing. It's graphic, too. It is, yeah. Very hard R in terms of violence, but I think they went a little too far in terms of, like, language. Like, there's too many, there's too much swearing. It didn't feel 
natural. Yeah. But yeah, really good flick. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, that movie gave me hope for superhero movies going forward. Yeah, if the, if you do standalone stuff like this, man, the the genre can continue. Yeah, and I we brought this up when we were talking about Fox being bought by Disney. Fox is the only kind of innovative. Right. They take risks. They don't always now. hit, but they do take the I mean, risks. With, uh, with Deadpool, Logan, and then the new horror movie, Mutants, coming out yeah. in 2019, 2019 now. 2019 now, yeah. yeah. They take risks. Mm-hmm. Uh, number eight, which I just switched for Logan earlier today, uh, <laughs> War for the Planet of the Apes. This will go down as one of the most underrated trilogies of all time. Andy, justice for Andy Serkis. Just, hashtag, hashtag Justice for Andy Serkis. God, he is absolutely incredible in this role as Caesar. The, the prison escape, the... Uh, the big war, the avalanche, and then in the new, the new a bad ape by Steve Zahn. I thought it was a great addition. You you cannot tell me that these are not real apes at times. It's crazy how good the special effects are in these movies, and they because they're so good. The emotional punch that the end of end of this movie has is just ridiculous. Again, I cried at the end of this movie too. Caesar isn't. Caesar will go. Caesar should go down as one of the greatest movie characters of all time. Yeah. This trilogy story is just. Phenomenal. It's fantastic. He knocked out of the park. Mm-hmm. And Andy Circus is the big cog that made yeah, it work. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the hashtag just for Circus is we both agree that he's very deserving of a Best Actor nom. Yep. For any one of these movies, but especially this year. Yeah. It's too bad they don't look at CGI the same way as prosthetics for Gary Oldman. And if they don't put him in the Best Actor category or whatever, Make a new category, because it's getting to the point where CGI characters are more and more common, and they, they deserve love, because that's tough to do, to act through all that crap. I know there's a lot of computers behind it and stuff, but Andy Serkis, he's a standout in this role, regardless of the CGI or not. Yeah, this is a cool movie. It's From the first scene, it's got the, it's almost like a Vietnam War movie opening scene. Yeah. And there's a couple of Apocalypse Now references. Mm-hmm. I think it's, like, Apes Now? Was it say in the Oh, movie yeah. Scene? Apocalypse Now, I Ape, think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Woody Harrelson, I movie. think, overdoes it a bit in this movie. He's a little over the top. I think him and Gary Oldman should have switched roles with um, Dawn and War. But still, it, it didn't, doesn't attract from how much I love this movie. Yeah. I walked out of the theater, I think I brought that up. Like, mm. Yeah. And there was moments where I think they could have totally knocked this movie out of the park. Mm-hmm. And they didn't necessarily. But the emotional impact was still there. Mm-hmm. And this movie, like, it moves pretty fast. Oh, it flies. It's probably like two plus, but... It and it flies. didn't do well, unfortunately. Yeah. But they are. I think they are done with this. They are done with this franchise. So I wish we went out on a higher note. But I think it's my number eight spot. I think this will age very well too. Oh, absolutely. I think this will be a top ten trilogy. Yeah, dude, we, it's so good. And if three years from now, if you look at top ten trilogy rankings, if you don't have this in your top ten, you, you did it wrong. Yeah, it's great. And then number seven for me is the Last Jedi. Coming out of it, I was a little low on it, but then upon two more re- rewatches, damn, it's good. Ryan Johnson, really innovative stuff, and all of it worked for me, minus Leia Poppins. Which could have been executed better, but the idea I think was okay. But yeah, I it feels very uh, very ending. Doesn't it feel like they can continue continue from this. Yeah, we talked about that. It's like, I don't even know if I want to see another one. But this movie itself was fantastic. Yeah. The um, I'm blanking on the uh, villain's name. Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Sith War. That's not Alpha Gate yeah. here. Oh my god! What the hell is his name? Snoke. I was close with Seth. So the fight scene with Snoke. Oh man. I think is my favorite scene of this year. It's up there for sure. When when Ray and Kyle just throw down. That's something we've never seen in a Star Wars movie before. In terms of how like brutal it is. There's decapitations. There's like sabers to the face. When Adam Driver catches the and pops it up. Pops it oh, up. Yeah. yeah. That scene is absolutely incredible. And alone should be positive fans on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, the backlash I think is unwarranted. I get that the he's changing a lot, but that's kind of the point of this is to subvert all expectations. I love Ray doesn't have like famous parents. That's great. Luke was kind of a dick. He was he's not the good old boy that we know from the OG trilogy. Yeah, and he's older now. People yeah. age. Get over it. Yeah, he was a little he's a little kind of a too perfect in the original trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I, I really. There's nothing I don't really like about this movie except for maybe maybe the Carrie Fisher, the yeah. Princess Leia. But this movie works. I He brought so many cool things with the Force. Mm-hmm. He really let it expand. And I love how petty he is on Twitter. People are calling out, like, this shouldn't be in it, but yeah. he pulls up the he, actual book. He pulls out the Force book. Yeah, and yep, this is a known thing. <laughs> it was like a long video, right? He's like, zoomed out the Force yeah, book on his yeah, thing yeah. and then opened it up. And like, 
that fight between Luke, fight in quotes, Luke and Kylo is so emotional and so powerful. And then see you later, kid, and it's, and just bounces. The funny thing, it's a it's a play on the first seven episodes all have a lifesaver scene at the end. Yeah, it's a play on that, and then yeah. he just vanishes. It's like, oh, you thought you were gonna get that? Well, no, no. he kept you guessing. Yeah. Which a lot of big franchises don't keep you guessing. Right, and he does, he's done it with all of his movies. He always subverts the genre that he's working in, and I think he was perfect for episode eight, and hopefully J.J. can can bring it home and not cancel out all the hard work he did with this one. But Yeah, I said this movie gave this trilogy its voice, and yeah. I still really stick by that. Mm-hmm. This, I've never really felt like I was a big Star Wars fan, but this movie right here, it, it made me a fan. Yeah, damn good. I feel Probably bad, though. I'm, might as well tell you now, this is 11... And, on my ah, list. I know. That's I switched Baby Driver for it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it was close. I, I really like this movie. Yeah. It's really good. It's phenomenal. I've said, I've said enough good things about it. Mm-hmm. I don't like arguing about this movie anymore because I'm just I know, I'm tired. sick of it too. I'm tired of yeah. it. Yeah. I don't like people I don't like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah, so there's great. my uh, 10 through 7. I, Tanya, Logan, Apes, Last Jedi. So Mike here. You were on uh, 6 through... Four. I'll update the fans. No, six through five. I'll update my many fans on my ranking so far. Uh, ten baby driver. If you're just tuning in, <laughs> <laughs> if you start no, pop- live now, serious XM. <laughs> ten baby driver. Nine the shape of water. Eight the post. Seven get out. And my number six. I think Keegan's uh, least favorite movie of the year. <laughs> Up there, the Florida Project. Yeah, it's uh, tied with my worst of the year. <laughs> I love this movie. I thought it was one of the best movies about childhood innocence. It totally captures that. And I don't really know how he did that so well. The last scene, I don't want to necessarily spoil it, but it's very different. It's kind of jarring. It took yeah. it took me a day and a half to kind of reflect on it, but I very much dig it now. It's very unconventional, and usually that's not a hindrance to me. I, I, I'm okay with like things being different, but this just killed it. Chopped it off at the knees... I was uh, six seven range throughout most of it, and then the ending happened. I was like, "Nah, I'm done. This guy was bullshit." <laughs> because I feel like it wasted my time. And how how long is it? Hour forty five? It's not that long. Yeah, it's not that long. But I just it's, it's still I felt cheated by the end of it. But this is your type of movie. I love a Damn movie where you just put a camera on a tripod and just let the characters move around. Yep. William Dafoe. Willem. Willem. <laughs> I corrected myself. Willem Dafoe. Yep. He but, is. The best part of this movie, for sure. Yeah. And the seven-year-old girl, six-year-old girl. Adorable. She's adorable. Mm -hmm. There's a couple plot twists in this movie. For a movie that really doesn't have a plot, there's a lot of drama in this movie. A lot. Yeah. I'm about to give this some credit. I think you were asking me to me to get it. My goal was to maybe sway King a little bit. He is just stirred. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. I love the colors, too. This is a production, production design nomination. I love the purple. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool. And, like, what I like about these movies is, like, I'll never be in that motel. No. And it was cool to see how kind of terrible it is in there. Mm-hmm. Not cool, but, like, hey, this movie's sad as shit. But, like, it was, it's, it's nice to open up and see this world. And I think this is what the director Baker does all the time. Tangerine was kind of like this, too. Sean Baker, yeah. Sean Baker. But, yeah, really good. Uh, number five, Blade Runner 2049. I said one of my criteria was from a technical standpoint, and I don't really know how you can get any better technical than this. This is the best looking movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. My favorite sex scene in any movie? Okay. What I say was the best scene, the Praetorian yeah, scene? Yeah, I was... This is my favorite scene, too. Yeah, the threesome scene, the quote-unquote threesome scene in this movie is beautiful, oddly. It it's is. It's just so well done. It is. Yeah. I don't even know how they did it. A lot of this movie is, I don't know how they did it. Yeah. That doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't. The emotional aspect, too. I feel like Blade Runner, the first one, it kind of hints at this emotional aspect mm-hmm. of kind of... Oh, I don't mean, know. Oh, he, he, I think the first one is just played so oddly by Harrison Ford. He seems very robotic, whereas Agent K, played by Gosling, is a robot, but he's so emotional throughout it, throughout all of it. Like, another favorite scene... I, I made a uh, favorite scenes of the year, and I think there were six Blade Runner scenes. His... God... Damn it! Scene in when he gets his memory checked by uh, by the photographer, incredible. Like his like him, his outburst of emotion at this at this one moment is just like yeah. There's something beautiful about him wanting to be human so freaking. He needs bad. To, like he wants to find a purpose so bad. He needs belonging in this world because he just feels like he's just, just a cog in the machine, just kind of working through it. But yeah, he wants that so bad. And it's very I think it's very relatable. Yeah, it's very easy to relate to this clone. Is that what they are? Replicant. Replicant. 
yeah, so it really just built on the world that really Scott created, and I just blew it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Um, I was entertained. It, you might get scared by the two hours and 45 minutes. Doesn't feel that long. Doesn't feel it. Do yourself a favor. This is a movie that everyone should watch. And watch it on the biggest screen you can possibly yeah, find. Yeah, it's going to be tough to find that now, but this is a movie where we'll look back at 2017, and I think you always look back on classics. You always define years by how many classics yeah. it has. We talk about 1994 being like, nearly the greatest year of movies of all time. There's only four classics, though. But that's all you really need. Yeah. I think back in 2017, I'm looking at this list, I think it's a very good year for movies, but the one classic that will hold up, that people will always come back and refer to, mm-hmm. will be Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. It's one of the best sequels ever made, one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So. Uh, and then number four on my list, I went back and forth between four and five so often, but number four on my list is Lady Bird. Once again, this is a movie that's very much my cup of tea. I had this a little higher when I when I watched it, and I don't necessarily know if it lost steam in my eyes. I think I just saw a couple movies I liked more, and there's one movie in particular that I just put ahead of it. But it's not only a great coming-of-age tale, it's one of the like just the funnier high school movies I've ever seen. And it kept me laughing, kept me entertained throughout, and... Just the relationship she has with her parents feels so real and so relatable. I think it needed to be a girl, too. I think it needed to be a girl, because... You've seen enough of the male coming-of-age stories, and this was really cool to see the other side of it. Yeah. Because I could see my sister in this movie. I could see my mom in this movie, and it was cool to see that relationship played out on screen, where you usually don't see that. Yeah. We brought up in our podcast that dress scene. Where they're fighting, yeah. like, like the dress. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really good. And I, I, you, I don't think this drags at all. I don't think there's like a wasted scene in this movie. It f- just quick snaps by. I think it's a whole year it takes place. Year and a half maybe. It's a school year, so like yeah, nine months. just r- rapidly moving. They keep you on your toes. Characters that you th- think are going to go one way at the beginning don't really turn out that way. You know, Liam said it does it fall in a couple of troughs. Maybe tropes. Tropes. Troughs, that's a that's a dip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tropes, uh, yeah, but it's Greta Gerwig's life. Yeah, yeah that might that might be accurate. So she said her goal was to make a woman's Rushmore, and I think she totally did that. I love them both. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's a good uh, suburban. I think if you're from a suburb white person, you can really relate to this. Especially movie. if you're from uh, Sacramento, <laughs> because this movie is very Sacramento. This movie is very Sacramento. So I'm sure it crushed. I always there. thought Sacramento was like a major city, but this makes no, it look it's, it's very suburban. It's weird that it's a capital of California. It must so I think it's very big. It must have been before there was any like cities there when they picked that as the capital. I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's a central location. They like that. But yeah, I really like this movie. That was your four? That was my four. Alright, uh, my number six a movie I watched this week, uh, Wind River. Wow. Uh, from the writer of Sicario and Hell or High Water, but he directed this one, his directorial debut. I just love this guy, I think, because... Hell or High Water is a bank robbing heist movie set in West Texas, middle of nowhere. This is a murder mystery set in an Indian reserve in Wyoming. Personally, I thought it was super relatable. <laughs> it's just like, he just takes these like tried and true stories, but puts them in like middle of nowhere America. This is what his like Midwest American trilogy, I forget what he called it. Some oh yeah? Midwest American trilogy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this ties in well with Hell or High Water. Yeah. Oh, and Sicario? And Sicario. He wrote Sicario as well. But is this his trilogy? These three? Yeah, th- yeah it's these Those, three, oh, yeah. Okay. I totally, I totally can see where yeah. he's coming from. There's really disturbing imagery, but it never feels like too much. Like, I did like hold my breath at times. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe you showed that. Really intense, super emotional, beautiful. I, we got it on DVD. I wish we got it on Blu-ray because I don't know nothing about my, Wyoming. But god damn, I want to move my to Wyoming now. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I thought Elizabeth Olsen would be too hot for the role, which is unfair to her. But she's really good in it. Jeremy Renner is fantastic in this movie. I don't think you've ever seen him this good other than Hurt Locker. i never seen Hurt Locker. Yeah, and but he's, yeah. he's great. Totally lets him act his pants off. Yeah. And he kills um, it. The Indian guy from Hill or High Water comes back, and he has some really emotional scenes in this. Native American. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. First Nation. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. Native American. And he's great. Like, yeah, his two scenes are really emotional. Especially, Especially with the, his wife. And the last scene. And the last scene. He knows how scene. to get the gut punch last scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like Hell or High Water last yeah. scene. This movie made me cover my eyes. I know. <laughs> and I don't cover my eyes a lot, yeah. but you know how he goes back in the house at the end and he opens that one door? I don't want to give away too much because yeah. everyone should go see this movie. You know, he opens the door. Yeah. And after you see the... Yeah. I, my eyes were covered. Yeah. I was just like, 
Because I thought you were yeah. going to see someone dead there. Yeah, th- yeah. He doesn't hide anything. He built he, it up he, perfectly. He lets it all out there. Like this is what happened. You need to see everything that's going on in the story. He doesn't hide anything. It's brutal. It's really brutal. It is. I'm sure some people couldn't stomach it, mm-hmm. but I can see that. Man, it's so well done. I, I really love this movie. A good overall message at the end too. Yes. Ties into a very cause about Native Americans going missing and no one really giving a shit. Yeah. Oh, that's a crazy stat. It's like every demographic in the in big possible has a missing persons like list except for women Native Americans. I don't know why that is. Yeah, great message at the end. Like, this needs to get out there. Like, we need to help the, like, these people. Yeah, and he did it in like such a cool. Not, I mean, maybe cool isn't the right word to use because this movie's so sad. But like yeah. an inner entertaining, like, just such an emotional movie. Yeah, it, it's powerful. Movie. Powerful. That's a really good word, word to use. Powerful. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth Olsen was very good in this. She's a very good actress. Yeah, she is. And uh, yeah, she's starting to uh, branch out a little bit more too. Mm-hmm. This is a good year for her. For sure. Uh, number five for me is Coco. This is the best Pixar movie in the last eight years. I know there's not much competition. Well, in Inside Out. Three. Would it, I like it? Okay, I like it more. So, yeah. but Inside you're not a big Inside Out fan. Inside Out, it's really it's only competition. But still, it is something to behold. Um, it is the best looking Pixar movie for sure. Um, the music is fantastic. I think it should win best original song at the Oscars. Showing this holiday, which. As Americans, we get a taste of in like Spanish class, but seeing it like displayed like this is like wow, this is actually like really, really fucking cool. What a beautiful holiday! Yeah, and something I wish that yeah, I wish we celebrated this holiday or at least had a version of it because it's really cool that they really and the way you get forgotten if your if your family doesn't continue to celebrate you. I mean, which is kind of brutal <laughs> in a way, but it's really cool that we have like they or they have this outlet of just like constantly remembering family members for like generations at a time. And yeah, the side character I forget his name is great. The skeleton. Um, Oscar? Yeah, I think Oscar is great. The plot twist, it's very Monsters, Inc. That's why I left on my top ten list. Yeah, but... It sucks, because I freaking love this yeah, movie. Yeah, it's great. For it's all the gorgeous. reasons you're saying. Yeah, and uh, I think it'd be an absolute travesty if this doesn't win uh, Best Animated uh, animated Movie. And it will, and I agree with you. Other than Inside Out, I have this a, just a peg below Inside Out just because of the Monsters, Inc. plot twist. Or yeah. the ending of Monsters mm-hmm. Inc. Which I don't know why they did that. I don't know there were so many other ways they could do it. Yeah. But, but it's yeah. not enough to really curb my loving of the movie. And it's such a beautiful movie. Like it's this is crazy. a great movie to show your child about mm-hmm. death. Yeah. Pictures are so good at that. They so have, like really heavy topics that you probably shouldn't introduce your kids to, but they do it in such a way where like this is okay to, to teach my kids about death and and they can understand it and really like, digest it in a way that like a DreamWorks movie couldn't do. Or, no, such a vintage Pixar movie. Yeah. Love and, to see it. And Remember Me, it's played like five times in like different ways each time though and it, it hits every time. And then the last scene with the grandma is so emotional. Oh man. Brought tears to my eyes. My whole family was crying. Yeah. Ranging from ages of 55, sorry dad, 58, <laughs> sorry dad, <laughs> to, to, to me. Uh, yeah. Ugh. And her face, Coco's face. Look at the know. grandmother, yeah, yeah. great grandmother. The detail is insane. Yeah, uh, they, they came out and like talked about how beautiful the, this movie is. Like the directors, I was like, Are you tooting your own horn here, but no, like it's that, it's that good. Yeah, I, I, I really liked that how they came out and said thanks for coming and seeing this movie. Mm-hmm. And then number four for me is Baby Driver. Um, after the news of Quentin Tarantino recently, I feel like I should change my, my favorite director, and I'm gonna go Edgar Wright. <laughs> I love Edgar Wright. Um, I've loved everything he's done so far, from Scott Pilgrim to the Cornetto trilogy to this. It's insane how well edited this movie is. It's it's seemingly impossible how they nail every note in an action beat, and it's like it makes no sense. It's crazy how because he he had this in his head for like twenty years, and for it, it to come out this way, this perfect, is unbelievable. Baby is an all time character. I love Baby. Yes, there is a character that lingers a little too long at the end, which took my brother out of the movie. Yeah, I, I was just so bought into this movie at that time. I didn't really care. Kevin Spacey can't even tarnish this movie, even though he's in it. He's That's fine. Right. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, th- we didn't even talk about the uh, his uh, his his guardian, his deaf uh, baby's guardian, yeah. the, the the deaf guy. Yeah, actually deaf. They got a real really. Yeah, their relationship's so cute. I know it's. Great. He's like g- cut the crust off the uh, yeah, PBJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just dancing around the around the house and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been coming out just to my love of Edgar Wright, but I think this is something special. I'm glad uh, it's getting some Oscars love. I wish he got some more director's love. But yeah, this is a great movie. I think everyone would enjoy this movie. I don't think... If you don't like this movie, then you just don't enjoy fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's a lot of fun. And then the soundtrack is great. I've been listening to uh, a lot of stuff off it ever since, from Deborah by T-Rex, and uh, the opening is... uh, 
Bell Blues bottoms, Explosion. Blues Explosion, blah, blah. Bell Bottoms, yeah. Which is, that's the song that gave him the idea to take this movie, yeah. right? He's like, this would go perfect for a car chase. Yeah. If you're on the fence of whether to watch it or not, watch the opening scene, it's on YouTube. But I'm sure it'll be sold. It's it's great. This yeah. might go as a classic, too. Yeah, I mean, like... It's so different. It's so well choreographed, even in the car. Like, that one puddle turnaround is, like, is nuts. Yeah. I was just so giddy in the theater watching this movie. Yeah. And we were building this movie up, too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you were like, yeah. I watched all the Edgar Wright movies before this just to... Uh, get ready for it. Get going. <laughs> yeah. Live yeah. up to it. It's not my favorite from him, uh, but... It's not my favorite by him either, but yeah, he's he's awesome. He's definitely top five director for me mm-hmm. as well. well. Not in the top three, Mike. <sighs> and now it's your turn to go. Number three for me is A Ghost Story. Watched it last night. Did you like it? I did like it. Yeah. Um, the aspect ratio was driving me bananas. I love that though. <laughs> um, the sixteen nine? Uh, no, this it's four. It's, it's four three. Oh. Sixty nine is what we normally watch in. No, sixty nine is a TV. It's a widescreen TV. Yeah. It's four three is a. Is a You're square. right. Four three is the square. Yeah. Yeah. Might be. I, I don't want to sleep thunder here, but this is a movie that lingers on things. This movie is an hour and a half. It could be thirty minutes, but. I was so bought in where it didn't feel long at all. Yeah. It flew. You, you literally watch Rooney Mara eat an entire pie for like seven minutes. Yeah, it's seven minutes. The camera doesn't move once. It doesn't move a single time. But for some reason, you're like, I was entertained the entire time. It makes no sense why I was entertained, but like, just came Not even entertained, it. just captivated. Just captivated, yeah. And you can't look away. And like, the ghost in a sheet, like, joking Halloween costume is for some reason like kind of spooky and terrifying in this. A lot of this movie works where I, I, I was amazed how much it worked. It's it doesn't really make good. any sense. It's really good. They couldn't have gotten two better actors for this movie. They're not in it much. But when they are. But when they are, they're great. Yeah, Because, yeah. I mean, you, you already know that Casey Affleck can take on very emotional roles from, mm-hmm. from um, Manchester by the Sea. Right. And Rooney Mara just has that, that face. Mm-hmm. She just expresses emotion with her eyes. So how about well. uh, walking, walking Penis's former brother-in-law making out with his current girlfriend? They're good friends. Yeah, I know. They're very good friends. He's probably love very it. into it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rudy Mara so much. Yeah. She's Even like the, like the long, it's not really a makeup scene, but long cuddling scene. I loved it. It was just like so adorable. I don't know. So the aspect ratio, the reason why he did that, yeah. which I thought it just added the spookiness. That's why I kind of took yeah, from it. Yeah, it's a little creepy. Because it's a little cut off on the edges too. Mm-hmm. He said he wanted to make it feel like you that you were trapped. Trapped okay. in a box. Just how like the ghost is. Yeah, I like how the movie goes whole full circle, and I kind of said it reminds me of Space Odyssey because it goes so far out there in the third act. Yes, but unlike this, I feel like the the Space Odyssey is trying to portray something, and I feel like this is a better job than, t- than 2001 wow. Space Odyssey. At Stanley Cooper. I'm sorry, that's gonna upset so many people. There's only one monologue in this movie, and the monologue is just really, really sad, but it really makes you think. I think the screenplay is ten pages long. Yeah. There's almost no dialogue. Almost, yes. Yeah. There's the probably first, like 10 lines spoken the first 10 time. minutes, there's a little dialogue, and then, and that, then the rest of it. it's just good score. Anywhere says one of the best edited movies they've ever seen. Edited? I don't know. Maybe. I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's just long takes that yeah, I, really nothing happens. I thought that was kind of weird, but yeah. it's, it's spooky. It is spooky. I was hearing noises that I don't think I... Like, it's not like a horror movie. No. But like... It's a little, it's a little something. It's a little something, you know. It's weird. Yeah, I was hearing noises. I was like looking around, because it's yeah, again, it's a dude in a sheet. It shouldn't yeah. be scary, but like it's kind of creepy. The way it's shot, the camera never moves. Mm-mm. I don't think it ever moves. A mouse ran across my room while I was watching this. Oh boy! <laughs> so I had to watch. I had to watch with the lights on the last hour. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's on Amazon. I don't know if a lot of people like it. No, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. <laughs> but. If what we said intrigues you, it's an intriguing movie. It is. Go, go see it. My number two movie is very polarizing, and I totally get the hate about it. And I don't even know if I would recommend this movie to people, but Mother is my number two. From a technical standpoint, I this I think everyone could agree this movie is shot beautifully. Yes. How it's either Jennifer Lawrence over the shoulder, a close-up of her face, or her point of view. It's very much Jennifer Lawrence the entire time. It's always from her perspective or just her face. Mm -hmm. And the way that, the the opening scene especially, how she just slowly moves around the house. And you just, every time she turns a corner throughout this whole entire movie, you hold your breath. Yeah. And I watched this the day before I saw it. I was very scared during this movie. 
and it I was just sitting there laying back like this isn't scary at all if you want to see a scary movie go watch Mother because mm-hmm. it is a scary movie or I guess more thriller but it keeps, my heart was racing for yeah, sure you never know what's going to happen now a lot of people say it's heavy handed I get uh, me and King luckily saw the movie before we didn't hear any of that stuff and we're too dumb to put one and one together <laughs> Nobody, you know what I took from it I took it from a relationship perspective and I, because I know Aronofsky just recently divorced his wife, hmm. so I do think this ties in a little bit. I think from a relationship relationship perspective, where a guy is so consumed about other things that he still loves his wife, but he's so consumed about other things, bringing other people in, and so deeply driven by his work that he neglects the person closest to him to the point where it literally destroys her. Yeah, um, I said when River is brutal, this is. Very tough to get through if you don't have a, a good stomach. If you have a weak stomach, you may vomit <laughs> during this movie. Yeah. Especially at one scene the, in particular. The, the last act is it's, uh, brutal. It's tough. It, it's really uncomfortable for the last... The third act is... I mean, it's a slow burn for the first two acts, and then the third act comes, and it's like, oh my god, like this is a lot to take in, a lot to process at one time. Yeah, I like the, I like the movie. Um, it's not in my top ten, no spoilers but uh yeah i can appreciate what he was going for but i would recommend this to basically zero people yeah you know we, we always go would you recommend it to other people probably not no. i've actually talked to two friends that were curious because they saw it was my top number two at new year's eve and uh i kind of was just like it's up to you man i can't really rem- recommend this would i watch it again i don't know this movie made me so this movie made me so damn sad and kind of i thought about this movie for so long it, it it sat with me for like two two weeks I was, like, depressed from this movie. <laughs> really, I was. It really was an emotional gut punch for me. So I don't know if I'd watch it again. But I just think this movie's beautiful. And I I wasn't happy about it. I wasn't happy watching it. Didn't make me feel good. Nope. But uh, it was moving as all hell. So if a movie does that for me, it has to be high on my list. So I have a number two, Mother. All right. I don't feel good about number three. <laughs> you last to see about... I don't feel good about number three. It's, uh, it's Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> you were going to have it high. Yeah. Um... It was number two for a while, but I realized, like, I, I just can't put Thor Ragnarok as number two. I had an absolute blast with this movie. This movie is so Taika Waititi. It's so, like, there's so much improv and there's just so much humor thrown at the wall, but, like, pretty much all of it lands. Taika Waititi himself as Korg is absolutely hysterical. He steals every he's, scene. Yeah, I didn't know it was him, yeah, and he steals great. every scene. It's incredible. And in a franchise that is pretty dull with Thor 1 and 2, th- this is an absolute standout. One, I think one of my favorite Marvel movies for sure. I'm a big comic book movie guy, and this is high on my list, especially in terms of Marvel. I hope Chris Hemsworth stays around just because of this movie, because this was something special, and if they can re- recreate this magic, that'd be great. Tessa Thompson is bae. Goldblum's the best. Ruffalo's the, the man. And then Loki who is used almost too much like they, they he's a crutch in other movies i loved his his arc in this movie and there's so much humor between the two of them that it, it was it was great the hulk thor scene was a lot of fun there's some cgi mistakes in terms of like the hella um like on earth and the planes it looks kind of bad but didn't detract the uh the movie from me and then hell is a great villain Something you don't get often in a Marvel movie. Um, and you you liked it. You, you're getting pretty sour on Marvel movies, but you seem to enjoy it. It felt fresh enough. Yeah. I didn't think it necessarily transcend the genre. Right. But it felt different Especially enough. Especially in Marvel, which is getting very samey. This is a great breath of fresh air. If, if you take out Guardians and Iron Man, it might be my third favorite Marvel yeah. movie. It's really good. There's a huge gap. Between those two movies, right, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but it. yeah, it, it might be third. But yeah, I just had so much fun with this movie, and I think I gave it a nine coming out, and I thought maybe that's way too high, but I think that's right. <laughs> I just really dug this movie. I mean, this is up your alley. Yes, absolutely. It's very much up your alley, and yeah, it's a, uh, I mean, yeah, coming from a guy who's not a big superhero movie fan, uh, the Spider-Man Homecoming is the last movie on my list this year. Really? Yeah, <laughs> that's an upset Liam. Liam loves that movie. Yeah. So we should fight over that instead of... Uh, instead of I don't even feel Roman. strongly about yeah, Greenish yeah, yeah. Uh Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, if you've given up on the Marvel Universe, I understand. But go watch Thor. Yeah. Right rock. You don't need to watch the first two Thors. No, I didn't, no, and I very no. much enjoyed it. You'll have a good time, I can guarantee. You will have a good time, yeah. <laughs> yes. You'll have to real luck, I guarantee it. That's probably the best way to put it. It's very enjoyable two hours. Mm-hmm. And then number two for me, which I think was at seven to start the week, but upon rewatch... <laughs> Uh, Get Out, my only Oscar-nominated, or only Best Picture nominated. I'm shocked that you don't have Call Me By Your Name on your list. I'll get I'll get to it in my honorable mentions. Wow. Um, yeah, Get Out is something special. As every reason Mike's head up top. Even after seeing it and knowing exactly what happens, I still had, like, 
physical reactions to what was going on. I, I yelled fuck you to Catherine Keener. I yelled you bitch at Ashley Williams when she, when she had the keys. Like, this movie works on so many levels and Jordan Peele deserves all the credit in the world. It's terrifying, but not in like a slasher Jason Michael Myers. It's just like psychological, like, man, this is really messed up stuff that they're doing. And even as a white person, if I was in that room, I'd be terrified. Like, these are my people. <laughs> <laughs> this is they love me. Yeah, but man, it, genius. Absolutely genius for for Jordan Peele to do this. And I think this is a movie that you need to watch a second time. Yeah. Because there's so much stuff laid down early on that comes out later. On my first viewing, I'm like, oh, you know what? That was a uh, really good horror movie. I didn't really understand any of the... I didn't really think there was any racial undertone. And the second time you watched it, it's like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I got all that. And we watched it in the best setting ever with a half-black, half-white theater. And it was yeah. incredible. And I thought maybe that was skewing my viewing. That's wrong. Uh, but... <laughs> I watched it by myself at home the other day, and it, it hit just as hard. It's, this movie is so good. So, yeah, that's... Uh, I get my spiel movie. about it, but it's super good. It's on HBO. If you haven't seen it yet, go go watch it. You suck. Stop listening to this podcast. <laughs> Give up. Okay, so my number uh, number one, I, if you listened to a couple weeks ago, I think you could already figure it out. Call me by your name. You know... <sighs> a late entry, because you released your top five at uh, New Year's. I did. That's why I said it's, you know, so far. Man, freaking love this movie. <laughs> uh, this can go toe-to-toe with any movie I've seen in the last five years. I have very similar praise for my movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I and I, I know it's number one for you. Yeah. And I, I totally understand what you're going to say there, but, man, I it's... just I, I just want I want to be in that world. I want to jump through that screen. Yeah. And that doesn't happen that often. Man, I bought the book. I bought the book right after this movie. Their relationship transcends every race, sexual orientation. It is just beautiful, pure love. So authentic. And I was walking out of the theater, I'm like, how do they pull that off? And then you see them in interviews, and they just have yeah. naturally great it's, chemistry. It's so cool to watch them interview with, with each other. Yeah. And this is a movie that I will rewatch for my whole entire life. I think yeah. this totally plays out for rewatchability. So Monologue at the end of Strasbourg. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Strasbourg. Steven we, Strasbourg. We should have a running tab of what I've called his yeah. last name. I can't uh, remember. Michael Stahlberg. Michael Stahlberg. One of the greatest monologues I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Just grabs you by the throat, shakes you. Uh, and I, I've thought about that every single day since I've seen that movie. Yeah, I, I feel bad not putting it on there because I love this movie. I didn't think I would. I'm like, oh, the, the, two gay, the two gay guys in Italy? Yeah, probably not for me. But, dude, it's so good. M- maybe Grandpappy John shouldn't watch it because he's a conservative Christian guy. But even he might love this movie. It's even he might. gorgeous. Unless you're surely against gays. That's not the only way that you should yeah, really watch this but movie. But, like, it's so genuine the entire time. It, it's never like... Yes, there's probably too much too much sex at one point, but that's might, might be personal. Yeah. But like, we, like me and Cody said, it's like man discovering his own sexuality. Yeah. So I feel like you need to have, to a certain extent... But, man, their life. relationship is so good. It's shot beautifully. I want to live in Northern Italy now, like, so bad. I like, want to eat... I, I, the state is great. I bought five peaches after this movie. And they're, they're <laughs> I want to eat peaches for every single day. They yeah. are so good. I don't want to eat peaches before this movie. It is a travesty that Luca Guadagnino did not get a Best Director nomination. It's a travesty he didn't get a Best Director nomination. It's a travesty he didn't get a Best Cinematography nomination. And I will say, another uh, best scene of the year is these two at the fountain talking about the relationship as it's starting to get going. It's, it's, it's so one shot, shot. One shot. It's like about, five minutes long. Yeah. They, it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, they just walk around this monument. You see them separate, and then they come back together. And and then the final shot with uh, Chalamet, oh, yeah. look at the fire, heartbroken. There's three great scenes. And yeah, we yeah. all, everyone in the theater, the movie's over. The movie is clearly over, credits are rolling. No one moved in the theater. It's it's a powerful image and just so well acted. For him to hold that emotion and, and crying for like... A five-minute credit run is, is is something else. I would love it if he won best best actor. He won't. It's gonna go to Oldman, but that would be amazing if he, he got it. He should win so bad. Oh man. Yeah, like you said, that I've never seen a theater like that. Oh. At the end of Apes, Apes it was, was quiet. Apes was quiet. Yeah. It was quiet. People kind of sat in their seat. So maybe there's a similar, but this was just Apes no one was, wanted to leave. Yeah. People were stuck to their seat. Mm-hmm. Apes was a was like the end of an era. End of the like, end of a character that we've known for like. Seven years at this point. We all saw it Thursday night, right when it came out. Yeah, so we it was the fans. We it was fans. us at twenty Dire and Apes yeah, fans, yeah. which is my but people. This was just like this was just a powerful movie through and through, and to, yeah, have no connection. I'm sure like 
one percent of that crowd had, had read the book before it. My Brit lit teacher was in the crowd. Really? So she did. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Like, for everyone just in those two hours, just to connect to, the, to these two guys to this, and just magnetic relationship that was happening in front of us, and for us just to be glued to our seats, just for, to watch a guy stare at a fire is is crazy. Man, just the connection you feel with them. Every character's good. Yeah. Every scene's beautiful. And I'm reading the book right now. And it's from his perspective. And it's very different because you know his attention right from the beginning. Yeah. First 30 minutes, you're like, hmm, he's, <laughs> is he interested or not? Well, my, my son a sexy dance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go see it. I really it's freaking great. love this movie. And you said Remember Me was your favorite song of the year. Mystery of Love is probably my from all the movies. Is that uh That's the one second in the middle. One? Second one, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, it's fantastic. It's by Suf John Stevens. I'm sorry his name. I listened to his two most popular albums, Carrie and Loa and uh Illinois. And I've never really been a big <laughs> Illinois? Is it yeah. actually spelled like yeah. that? Okay. It's all about it's all about Illinois. Okay. It's good it, both albums are good. And I understand he's a huge indie cult following artist. But I've always felt like he was almost too sad and just too emotional. But ever since I've seen this movie Dude, and and you see him so perfectly good. played out. I just feel a deeper connection to his music too. I was having my foot whenever those songs came on. Dude, they're, they're amazing, and I'm, I do feel really bad not putting it on there. It just came down to just enjoyment level for me, and just these ten movies I happen to enjoy more, which right. which is a shame because this movie is really good. And if this was top ten best movies of the year, I think this is number one for me. I think this is the best movie. Maybe Blade Runner, which I'll get to in about a second here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this movie's incredible. I, I I respect that. This isn't a necessarily doesn't necessarily. Hey, you know what? It made me feel really good, and I don't know why. It's heartbreaking at times, but but it makes me just really enjoy life. Where Mother made me depressed, this made me just glee. <laughs> I think I was glowing yes. walking out of the theater. And this movie needed to be set where it was set. It had. I think it had to be like almost a like, mystical land. If this is set in like bumfuck nowhere, Minnesota, it doesn't work. If it's set in like the Fargo. city, if it's set in Fargo, it doesn't work. <laughs> it needed to be in Italy, and man, it's it's just so gorgeous, yep. all all the way around. Everyone knows what I'm going to say is my number one. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, uh, best sequel, um, maybe of all time, one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. It's a hard sci-fi, meaning it asks you. Big philosophical questions. What is life? What does it mean to be human? If you're born not from a human, what is your worth? What is love? And it's all done so well. This is a masterful performance by Denis Villeneuve. And coming off the back of two pretty big movies, that for him to pull this off is just ridiculous. Doesn't make any sense. If Roger Deakins doesn't win cinematographer, it's an absolute travesty. Best looking movie I've ever seen. The score by Hans Zimmer is amazing. I listen to it every day at work, just in the background. It's just... It's just, like, loud noises and stuff, but it's just, like, every time I hear a big boom, I know exactly where in the movie we're at. I just basically follow through the movie as I listen to it. It's so good. I am going to buy this on Blu-ray just to support this movie as much as I can. It got no love at the box office. It's probably too ambitious, but I'll reward it for being ambitious. Poor so, Denis, uh, man. He's really taking this one on. Yeah, I think he had another excuse today about why yeah. he didn't do well. It's like, I look, I go on Twitter every time it's... Denis, like, I dude, so bad. don't go so hard on yourself. It didn't do well at the box office. This will be a classic. It will age. When people go back and they look at your career, they're going to talk about Blade Runner 2049 yeah. first. Yeah, this was a spectacle to behold, and I... Love this movie, for sure. This was easily my number one movie of the year. My, mine was too. Like, oh. I had a tough time, but there is night and day. There yeah. is huge distance. Yeah, I mean, Blade Runner and Get Out is, is massive between. Like, this, this, was, this was the easiest choice I've made in years. This is probably my favorite movie of the decade, I'd say. Uh, so the last eight years. Now, you were high on Arrival, too, though. I loved Arrival, yeah. If you gave this movie a rating, call, uh, Blade Runner 10, perfect score? I give it a 9.5 because I don't like to give things 10s other than Lord of the Rings. So, a 9.5, yeah. Arrival, probably a 9. Sakaar, like, like a 9. So this, this, dude's just, this dude's the guy. Is Thor still a 9? Yeah, I love Thor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I really like Thor a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I made a really bad statement. I think it was the third episode. Don't go back and listen to it. I said that I don't like sci-fi movies, which is a, not a true statement at all. Because I look back at my flick chair, and my, like, seven of my top 20 movies are sci-fi movies. Mm. And I realized that I like sci-fi movies, but they have to be really good, and they have to reflect on life. And that's this, all this is. And and that is the traditional genre of sci-fi. Yeah, like, it was, old, like old sci-fi. Yeah, yeah it's that, that's where it got its roots from. It's yeah. not Star Wars. That's right. not the traditional sci-fi. Mm-hmm. That's for entertainment. It's supposed to uh, make you reflect on life. Yeah. 
interpret it a different way so it makes sense to you, and then you reflect in your life like, oh, yeah, and this movie totally does that. Yeah. He knocks on the park. And and Blade Runner, the first one, does it, but I think I think this one is just so much better. Leagues better than, than the first one. I read an article, I think it was at IndieWire, it was talking about why Blade Runner is so good, and it said, Blade Runner 2049 is so good, it said, I don't think Ridley Scott knew the purpose of Blade Runner. That's why it took him four editing Gigs, yeah, yeah, in order to to understand the human existence is yeah. what people actually care about in that mm-hmm. movie, and it's like Denis Villeneuve, no. he totally captured that and knocked out the park, expanded on mm-hmm. that. <sighs> Such a good sequel, and I feel bad using the word sequel because I feel like it's almost a negative connotation. Yeah, it stands by itself, like totally. It's an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, Just from cinematography alone. Yeah, the the threesome scene, incredible. The seeing your memory and him going, God damn it, scene is incredible. Him seeing the ad and, and the ad calling him Joe, being like, oh, this this thing just calls everyone fucking Joe. I'm, I'm no one, you know? There's so many good scenes throughout this movie, and yeah, masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. I totally agree with that. Want to do a rundown of our, uh, of our top tens? Yeah, we'll do a rundown of our top tens. Okay. I'm, you want to go first? You can go first. All right, for me, number 10, I, Tanya. Number 9, Logan. Number 8, War for the Planet of the Apes. Number 7, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Number 6, Wind River. Number five, Coco. Number four, Baby Driver. Number three, Thor Ragnarok. Number two, Get Out. Number one, Blade Runner 2049. Okay, for me, number 10, Baby Driver. Number nine, The Shape of Water. Number eight, The Post. Number seven, Get Out. Number six, The Florida Project. Number five, Blade Runner 2049. Number four, Lady Bird. Number three, A Ghost Story. Number two, Mother and number one movie of 2017 for Michael D. Jennison. <laughs> Call me by your name. A lot of times, and actually not a lot of times, I actually change it to Room right before the Oscars. But I changed Wolf of Wall Street five years ago. And I, I, a lot of times I do change my favorite movie of the year. This year I don't think I'll move from Call Me By Your Name. Not even close. There is so much distance. There, it doesn't make any sense I would ever do that. Yeah. So we only have two movies that were on both of our list, Baby Driver and Blade Runner 2049. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Wow. We've both seen every movie that we had in our yep. top ten. I really enjoy all your movies. When, wherever, War of the Planet of the Apes, Thor, Logan. I, Tanya, Logan, Last Jedi. Yeah. I mean, I think all those movies minus Thor are in my top 17. Yeah. You might have literally rattled off my honorable mentions. Yeah. Um, I should get to honorable mentions, I guess, right now. My honorable mentions were Ingrid's Goes West, oh, great movie. I, Tanya, Star Wars, The Big Sick, Downsizing, Coco, and The Glass Castle. I really dug the, the Glass Castle. Got panned by critics, but I really dug it. So I'll do my my four. Ingrid Goes West was like 14, Big Sick 13, and then before I saw Wind River, it was a battle between the female having sex with the fish and the guy having sex with the guy movie. And it was battle between Shape of Water and Call Me Your Name, and I went Shape of Water. But then Wind River came along and bumped them all out. But yeah, those four movies could easily be top ten as well. I just happened to pick I, Tanya on this day. Ask me in two weeks, it might be different. But yeah, I'm very happy with my top ten. I love all the movies. I, maybe I, don't, I love the order. Thor might be too high. I might, I might kick myself later down the road, but I loved all those movies. I had a damn good time in the theater, and I look back on them very fondly. It's a very deep year, wouldn't you say that? Dude, 2017 was a great year. Yeah, I have a bunch of summer movies. I, I have movies from February, from March, middle of the summer, Oscar season, like, yeah, all over the place. And I think almost every genre is very well represented this yes, year. Absolutely. You have a great horror movie, you have a great sci-fi movie, you have a great romance movie, and call me by your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great horror movie being Get Out, the great sci-fi being Blade Runner. You have a you have a great monster movie. When's the last time we saw a great monster movie? It's been forties. Yeah, it's been years. This year was a great coming of age tale, a great animated Pixar movie. Yeah. I do, comic you, books had a good year. Comic books had a good year. If you like a genre and you, I don't. There's everything. There's, there's, this year. there's a good Star Wars movie. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like there is literally everything in this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, a great. There was a good historical drama in uh, the post. And there was a great historical travel, but then it had a twist of comedy in Itania. It, it was just really an outstanding year. So, I guess we should get to... Oh, I update the totals right now. Me and Keegan's, if you combine both of us, our favorite movie of the year was Blade Runner 2049. With 16 points. And then you would have Get Out with 13 points. Okay. Yeah, so we'll explain it. So, we're doing 1 through 10. Number 1 is getting 10 points. Number 10 is getting 1 point. And then our guests are doing 1 through 5. 1 getting 5 points. 5 getting 1 point. So we will get to our guests and then compile them and make our podcasts top ten list. We will start off with Liam Garvin, who gave me 
not only his top ten, but every movie he saw this year. But, unfortunately, Liam, I will only read your top five. Number five, Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. Uh, number four, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which made neither of our lists. Number three, Coco. Number two, Get Out. Number one, Logan. So five points for Logan, four for Get Out, three for Coco, two for Three Billboards, and one for Jim and Andy. Dude. Jim and Andy will not <laughs> move on. What are your thoughts on, on Three Billboards? You didn't have it on your list. I didn't have it on your list. It just... Uh, I thought it was funny. Didn't stick with me very much, though. I think it's kind of nuts that it's winning consistently Best Picture. It's that or Shape or Water. It's, it's, yeah, a, it's a duel between those two. There's a very good chance it wins Best Picture. I, I don't know why. Me and you neither had an honorable mention, too. I mean, it's no. far down my list. Yeah, probably, I think it's like 17 for me. And it, I saw 37 movies this year. How many did you see? Fuck, you got, I think you got me with one. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no. 41, baby. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I saw like 30, 36, 37, something like that. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, it wasn't even close for me in top, top 10. I gave like a 7.5. I, I like the movie. But yeah, it, no. I don't think it's anything special. I don't think it's best picture worthy. That, that seems nuts to me. It's so nuts because we said it's a deep year, and it's just—it's funny, but in a way where it's mostly via swearing and racism, yeah, which is and cheap it, humor, it, in my opinion. It, it's like it opens these questions, like the, to ask you about like police brutality or like sexism, but never goes near yeah, with them. Just punts them. Just, yeah, totally punts them. Uh, anywhere article I read, it's like. He wanted to attack on all these things that modern society or society thinks. Yeah. And then halfway through, he's like, eh, let's make a funny movie. It very much feels <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah. That's probably the best take I've heard on it. Yeah. From fan favorite Cody McCune, we have number five, Baby Driver. Number four, Three Billboards. Our guests love Three Billboards. Wow. You know what? I, everyone likes Three Billboards, but besides me and you, I feel. Number three, Lady Bird. Number two, Get Out. Number one, Call Me By Your Name. We all know Cody was a big fan of Call Me By Your Name. Uh, you haven't, haven't heard the episodes on YouTube. Sound quality shit, but... It's a great, great episode. Review, great review. I guess I'll do honorable, honorable mentions as you tally these up. For Liam, his uh, honorable mentions are Spider-Man Homecoming, Last Jedi, Shape of Water, I, Tanya, and The Disaster Artist. I'm so happy we sold Liam on The Last Jedi. That's like my <laughs> favorite thing of the year so yeah. far. It's like the, and, then, and then I didn't put it on my list. <laughs> <laughs> and then for Cody, his honorable mentions are Shape of Water and I, Tanya. He really liked I, Tanya. I'm yes, surprised he didn't have it on there. I know. Do yeah. you want me to check it up to you on the tally? To sure. The yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Get Out's currently in first place with 21 points. It's been on everyone's list so far. Two seconds, three seconds, and a uh, sixth for me. So it's at 21 points. Blade Runner 2049 still hanging in there. Does have a prayer. I don't think it was a seat up besides me and you. Yeah. But it's at 16 points. Call Me By Your Name's got 15 points. Mother's got nine. Baby Driver's got nine. I think Baby Driver will continue to make a push. And Coco's got nine. Oh, time out. I was thinking about a tiebreaker for this. I think we should go to Movie on the Most Ballots is the first okay. tiebreaker. The second tiebreaker will be who had a higher on their list. So if someone had a number one movie and no, and no one else had a number one movie for the other movie... That movie wins. If the dead tie in both those categories, which isn't likely, me and you have to come to a consensus which movie's better. Okay. And then last for me is Joe Lakovich, who was on the Star Wars podcast. Number one, The Last Jedi. Wow. Number two, I, should, I should go in opposite order, huh? He was on The Last Jedi po yeah. podcast. Number five, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Number four, I, Tanya. Number three, The Disaster Artist. Number two, Baby Driver. Number one, The Last Jedi. Baby Driver making a... Uh, I'm make a push. I decent move here. Now it's on you. Either of the three. It is on me. So I should uh, talk about this. So Brett was supposed to be on episode nine, maybe? Nine or ten. Nine or ten. It was back when we were back home, and um, one of my good friends. He, Brett Zimmerman. Brett Zimmerman. He, um, Keegan forgot he had work <laughs> mm -hmm. back in Columbus. So we were all ready. We had a recording date, and we had a bail on him. So I it was, it. It was no fault of his own. I felt bad. He was. He's a big fan of the podcast. Very much looking forward to it. So I promised him that he could still do his top five of the mm -hmm. year. I think that's pretty And he went on a tear this week to watch as many movies as he could. I don't know. I think he might have watched about 10 or 14 movies in yeah, the last two weeks. It, incredible. It, it, incredible. Uh, to Zim. We all res We all respect that. And uh, guys, list right here. It's the first time I saw it. And Okay, here we go. Number five, Lady Bird. He also wrote a little blurb about each movie. <laughs> Anyone who grew up in a suburban middle class family can relate to this film. Hmm. That's very true. I agree. Number four, The Big Sick. Yes. And both our honorable mention. Yes. He is so charming in this movie. It's great. Uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah, I can never pronounce that last name. It's a tough one. He's a great follower on Twitter, too. Yes, he is. Maybe one of the best. You should give him a follow. 
Um, I am a sucker for romantic comedies, so I fell in love with this from the beginning. A touching inside look on the life and struggles of a first-generation Indian American breaking the norms of his home country. Damn, Zim, bring it! <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Phantom Thread! No! <laughs> no! You had King and Hook, Line and Sinker! God damn it! I texted him after those two. He just fell in love with Daniel Day Lewis. Oh Daniel Day Lewis' performance. Daniel Day Lewis. I wanted no votes. There's not much else that needs to be said. Acting at its finest. It's hard to disagree with that. Yeah, I know. This <laughs> movie sucks. I was not sure what to expect going into this film and was blown away. The combination of Daniel Day Lewis' dedication to his role and a story with unexpected turns make this one of the strongest films of the year. Also, a phenomenal movie film score. Yes, the score is good. Yes, yeah. DDL is good. Fuck this movie, man. <laughs> they shattered every glass on the table. <laughs> Where's the beer? Right. I, I think you can respect that take, though. Yeah, I can. But did he watch the movie? Did he have fun in that movie? He said it gave him twists and turns. All right. If you didn't watch the last episode, King despises his Phantom Thread. I Thurman. hate Phantom Thread. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan. Speaking of bad pours. Might have been the worst pour of all time. There was nothing but foam in was, this glass yeah, right now. it was nuts. But yeah, from an acting perspective, phenomenal. No, technically, it's a great movie. Yeah. But watch the and there's movie. And there's a good plot twist. You don't see that coming when you start. Whatever, dude. I'm done with it. I'm not, yeah, Whatever. <laughs> Number two, The Florida Project. Fuck you, Zim. You King, and me? Bre- King and a Brett couldn't have more. <laughs> oh my god, I was so locked in on two because I I want to put Big Sick on two. In my when yeah. I looked at my top ten, I said I agree with my top ten. Obviously, it's my top ten, but I feel bad for both Call Your Name and well, and Shape of Water and Big Sick. I really I wish you could have found a spot for for those three. Ingrid's Goes West, uh, The Big Sick, and Last Jedi, and Baby Driver, and. The Shape of Water. I'm weighing all those, and those movies are all so different. Yeah. The Shape of Water make yours? Yeah, it made nine. Okay. Barely. So close not making it. It, it didn't make it at one point, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I can't do that, because I love Richard Jenkins. I love Sally yeah. Hawkins, so I had to do it. Yeah. Uh, the Florida Project. Thought-provoking and emotionally troubling. Fighting with my hatred for the whore mother, who is a piece of shit. <laughs> and my I will agree with you with that, Sam. <laughs> my character of the year... That mother. And my empathy for the daughter who is making the best of her life. It's true. That That's what captivated me, too, about this movie. Yeah. It's just so beautiful watching her try to... She has nothing. And she makes so much out of it through child's imagination. Shows how persevering kids are. And then Willem Dafoe steals the show, as usual, with one of the best performances of the year. I agree. So you agree Again, with that? I agree with both <laughs> Toro Project and Phantom Thread. <laughs> I just fucking hate those movies with a burning passion. <laughs> Number one movie. Three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, 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 God damn. <laughs> a great crime drama with comedy in just the right places. Incredible cast and thought provoking. This movie will have you on the edge of your seats and laughing at the same time for its entirety. A stellar soundtrack featuring Zim's personal favorite, Jim James from The Morning Jacket. Yes, best, best acting movie of the year with The Shape of Water. Tight, tight race between those two. Great score, just uh, never stuck with me. Yeah, it's a movie that I liked a lot going out of theaters, and then it just kind of faded out. Faded out. I think a lot of thing is that we we talk about these movies a lot more in depth than like I ever would without doing this podcast. And I just kind of think the uh, that podcast kind of killed it. Chuck brought up a major plot hole that I really can't see past. Yeah, that's true. Quick update, Get Out, 21 points. Blade Runner, 2049, 16 points. Calling By Your Name, 15 points. What else is in the contention? Baby Driver, 13 points. And Lady Bird, 11. Hmm. Surprise Lady Bird's not getting more love. Where's uh, Three Billboards at? Three Billboards is at 9. And uh, Last Jedi at 9. Coco at 9. Michael E2, who was on the Post podcast, this is his top 5 of 2017. Number 5, Get Out. Keeps building its lead. Number four, Phantom Thread. God. <laughs> Number three, Lady Bird. Number two, Call Me By Your Name. Number one, Shape of Water. Very pretentious, E2. Very pretentious. All Academy Award Best Pictures. Maps. That's a solid list, though. I enjoyed all those movies. Eh, Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread is my one complaint on that list. <sighs> so, coming down to this, Get Out at 22 points. It's been on five ballots. Call Me By Your Name at 19 points. It's been on three ballots. Blade Runner, 16 points. Two bells. 
<laughs> my brother does not like sci-fi movies. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Lady Bird at 14 points. It's been on four ballots. So here we go. Chuck Jennison. Haven't seen it. Pull up the email right now. Oh, he wrote an opening monologue statement. This ended up being real tough. And although I'm almost positive I got the five movies right, the order is still pretty debatable for me. Regardless, this is what I'm rolling with. The Shape of Water, number five. Three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, number four. It's been all over the place. Number three, The Florida Project. Number two, Lady Bird. And Chuck Jennison's number one movie of 2017, Call Me By Your Name. Is that winner then? Yeah, nipped it at the end. Nice. Weird that a movie that isn't on my top ten winning is is pretty exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> You really enjoyed it. I really I, re- a lot. I really shocked you didn't have it. Because yeah. you go back on the tape, you said, this will be a high move at the end of my year eight gigs. Yeah, I thought so too, but then I really looked at everything else. And such a good year that I didn't quite make it. So I know uh, the Oscars get a lot of shit for what they nominate being too pretentious or st- too, like, too Oscar baity, too preachy. But it's pretty clear from the eight of us that compiled a list that a lot of the same stuff kept coming up over and over again. So it's pretty clear that these really are the best movies of the year. Minus, I think I... Wind River was only a vote for me. I think that was a solo. Mother, only movie for me. Yeah, Apes, I think was only for me. But everything else, I think, got multiple votes. All right, Mike, all the uh, votes are in from our guests. Let's do the uh, top ten of our podcast. So, it actually was a four-way tie with nine points, ten through seven, which is crazy. Uh, Mother was number 10 with 9 points Fuck. on the back of my 1 second place. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Coco with 9 points finished 9. I'm really happy with Coco. Yep. Like we said, I'm just upset I had to pull it off the list for the Monsters, Inc. scene, but it's still a phenomenal movie. The Last Jedi. People might hate it, but... It's, it's what, Zim's bottom 3 on his list? Yeah, Zim actually had it in his worst movies of the year. He added a little note. And yeah. King's Arthur, which... King Zim, Arthur, not King yeah. Arthur. Zim, why did you watch that movie? <laughs> <laughs> no one should watch it. Yeah, I I'm, uh, I'm happy to see Last Jedi on there. Yeah, uh, it was yeah, it was Zim's least favorite movie. It was like seven on me, yeah. Seven on you. Joe had it number one. Yep. And I think Liam helped carry that. So uh, no, Joe had it one. You had it at six. But yeah, you guys single-handedly brought it there. Let's go, Joe. And then three billboards finished seventh. Okay. With nine points on the back of uh, Zim's first place vote. And uh, Chuck, Cody, and Liam also giving it a fourth place vote. Two of us aren't high on it, but the people have spoken. I mean, it's it it very well might win Best Picture at the Oscars, so. Which is crazy. It is crazy. But we've already got into that. Yeah. Not, eh, it's fine. Baby Driver with 11 points. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, me and you both had on our list. Cody, Joe also did. Joy had second. The Florida Project. Can you believe it? Boo! You and Zim, right? And my brother. Fuck you, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck had it, I think, second. It was high. God. Chuck had third, but had second. I had first. No, I had, <laughs> I had six. Five points. I had six. Mike's trash. <laughs> Can you just... Maybe your opinion will change someday. Maybe you'll send me a text. Nope. You'll send me a text 20 years from now. Wow. I was so on the Florida Project. <laughs> a masterpiece. Don't count on it, man. Blade Runner 2049. Let's go! Or on the back of the two people in the room. 16 points. Some distance, actually. Uh, Lady Bird, 18th. Well represented everyone's list. Yeah. It's on five ballots. Yeah. Brett's, E2's, Chuck's, Cody's, and mine. Get out with 22 points. Woo! Also, well represented on uh, E2's, Cody's, Liam's, Keegan's, and Mines. And number one, Call Me By Your Name. Very surprised. You even said if it was the best movie, it oh, would yeah, be number yeah. one. Yeah. If this was what I think is the best movie of the year, it's, well, Blade Runner or Call Me By Your Name. Absolute masterpiece. Beautiful movie. Yeah. And our lists weren't that far off from our guest lists, if you look at it. Yeah, no, that's cool that... uh, A lot of the love was the same. Yeah. I'm absolutely stunned that The Post only got votes for me. No, you (laughs) shouldn't be stunned. (laughs) Guardians only got one point, so Jim and Andy. Well, yeah, there's no way Jim and Andy was getting any more The Big Sick only got two. It's too bad. It's one of the ones I wish they nominated. But yeah, Last Jedi. We're all very happy that that got on the list. absolutely. Uh, Joe felt bad about his his top five. He, He felt like... He only saw like six movies this year. The, the one that didn't make this was was uh, Kong Skull Island, but I mean, four of the five ended up making making the list. So uh, good list, Joe. Minus yeah. minus Guardians, but which is still a good movie. Yeah, I mean, Last Jedi, Baby Driver. That was eleventh and tenth on my list. I Tanya was probably like twelfth. 
Disaster Artist, good movie. I mean, yeah, that, that list is respectable. Oh, shit, they didn't make the list. But, but yeah, they, they were in contention for sure. But I, I said four of the five made the list, but they didn't. You know what? I'm surprised contention. I tell you to get more love. Because Cody came on and raved about it. Liam loved it. My brother loved it. I liked it a You lot. liked it, but it only got three points. That shows how deep a year it is, though. I didn't have my list tonight. Who else voted for I, Tanya? Only you and Joe. Damn. Because I was thinking that was probably a lock. If you would ask me, my top Cody texted the two of us saying, top three is going to be Get Out, Lady Bird, and Shape, Shape of Water. Water. No, no, no. Call Me By Your Name, Lady Bird, Shape of Water. What did I say? Did I say Get Out? You said Get I Out. I meant to say Call Me By Your Name. You know what's shocking? Shape of Water not on this list. That is shocking. The Oscar frontrunner not making uh, making our list. I mean, you only threw up two points to it. E2 threw up five, and Chuck threw up one. Just missed. Just missed with eight. Yeah, uh, that was my eleven. If I'm looking at my list, how many of mine made the list? Mother made the list. Baby Driver made the list. The Florida Project made the list. Blade Runner 2049 made the list. Lady Bird, get out. Call me by your name. So seven of mine did. You, Coco, Last Jedi, Baby Driver, Blade Runner, Lady Bird, get out. So six. Makes sense. We have more points, but yeah, it's pretty spot on there. A Ghost Story was really close. Making the list at eight points. <laughs> Just all because of me. <laughs> and so was Thor at eight points. If you would have put Thor at 9, it would have come down to a me and you arguing what was better, Mother or Get Out. A mother or... You think, you think I, could, I could have pushed you? Mother or Thor. I don't think so. <laughs> That's weird, because I don't think I would have moved either. Because... I feel like we, me and you both liked both... We both liked... I liked Mother the way you liked Thor. and But we're both super high on... on, the other one. on yeah. I don't think it would have ever ended. Yeah, I this don't podcast think would have been four hours I think hours I would have just been upset and said, Fine, fuck it. <laughs> mother. <laughs> I don't even but know. Who knows? Alternate universe that that argument's currently happening. You could have said, "Think of Chris Hemsworth's biceps." <laughs> and it probably would have persuaded me. Tessa Thompson, dude. Tessa Thompson. Ah, Bay. Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor <laughs> Lawrence, Bay. Not for me. That would, that would, that would warrant you negative points. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel good about that top ten. Yeah. And surprisingly, even though it's not on my top ten, I think Call Me Your Name is very much worthy of the number one spot. Yeah, I'm really happy that it got three first place votes, it got a second place vote, because this movie's awesome. It's so good, and it's not on my top ten. <laughs> I can't wait to put your top ten. I wanted to. I would have if you would have asked me. I'm like, yeah, it came out three or four, and then it was a runaway. Call oh yeah, it would have crushed. But I'm a comic book idiot. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the action movie and. It just came down to uh, to enjoyment. So this top four, I love. Call by your name, get out, Lady Bird, Blade Runner, twenty forty nine, the Florida Project. I think those are okay. Th- 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 those are five of my top six. Scra- five really? of my top seven. Oh wow! Not Mother and a Ghost Story, but I kind of uh, expected that. Scrap Florida Project. And run was back again. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Going to be, Lady, gonna be a classic. Lady Bird. All right, come here, age classic. Yeah, people will keep talking about it. Get Out. I think it'll be a classic, yes. absolute classic. And Call Me By Your Name. Oh yeah, that's a great top four. You know, I think we're actually sleeping on a year that's going to go down in history. Dude, it's really good. We of you have had arguments in the past about twenty fifteen was summer dominant. Twenty sixteen was, was Oscar now, like Oscar season dominant. This was year round was just great hit after great hit. Yeah, I mean. You had Get Out in February, which never happens. A good movie in February, forget about it. You follow that up with a summer where I feel like there was every two weeks, me and you were going to the theater really excited about a movie. Yeah. Um, Baby Driver, Apes, Dunkirk, which wasn't it's anyone's list. It didn't hit with us, but, but that's a big movie. But still, it, it, there was things getting to the theater, which, oh, uh, Wonder Woman, should totally oh, yeah. mention that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it seemed like... Logan back in March. Logan, yeah, lo- yeah um, Logan. Uh, Lego Batman movie back in... I think March as well. Yeah. Which I liked a lot. It didn't make me list, but I really liked that movie. I, I think it was at like number seven on Liam's list or something. Yeah. And then if you like Spider Man. I like Spider Man, yeah. Yeah, and that came out in July. Summer's really good. Logan Lucky, who me and you both kinda slept on, and a ghost story that came out in the summer that Wind I really Man love. When Rummer when with Rid- Ingrid Goes West was August. Oh uh, yeah. August was great Detroit. for Detroit. August was great for like small movies. Yeah. Which doesn't usually happen. Mm-hmm. But the Astro season's kind of creeping in. It was a very good summer blockbuster year. Yeah, 2017 was great, man. Yeah, it was a good time to start the podcast. Gave us a lot to talk about. Yes, it did. No Orient Express? Surprised? <laughs> a movie we both despised? Cutting room floor. <laughs> yeah, no. I really hope there's more movies coming in the future that we both kind of hate. That's kind of fun. <laughs> it is fun. But I, I gave it a thumbs up. I think <laughs> you did? If I could retroactively give it a thumbs down, I would, but you I give it a idiot. thumbs up. No, I think 
whenever we have to do a bad movie, we'll just do a topic instead from here on out. I don't, like, this week, we're not going to see Fifty Shades Freed. We're going to see... Well, we're going to see... We're doing this. What are we talking about? We're doing this instead. So I think we'll try to avoid bad movies. But I, there will be a time, I think. At some point, we'll, have to, we'll be forced into it. We'll see. Isle of the Dogs. I'm kidding. Can't wait. Annihilation. Oh, shit. When is Isle of the Dogs? March 23rd. I keep thinking it's February. I know. Every, every single time. time. Every, every podcast. Time. <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah. We'll do Black Panther, Annihilation, and Oscars. So, we're good. So, do you think Annihilation will be good? I just want kind of your thoughts on it. Yes. You, you, you think it's going to be good? I do think it will be good. And it's from the director of Ex Machina. One, it's the same director and writer. Two, the early buzz has been pretty much incredible. Yeah. And you got Portman, you got Isaac, you got Dern. Really? I don't know. I, that might be for my ass. Michael there's Shannon? Someone, there's, no, there's someone like kind of older in it that's pretty good. You know, I'm stoked. Okay, this is this is probably putting too much on it. I could see this being like a top five right from the get-go for me. I think... I can't wait for the rewind. i never seen Axe Body Night, so maybe that will change my opinion. You're going to love Black Panther. I think I'm going to like it a lot. Man, everyone keeps saying this isn't doesn't feel like a superhero movie. And that's what I want to hear. Yeah, I want to hear that too, but I've also heard that, that people are just, are just saying that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I might rip it. Jennifer Jason <laughs> Lee. <laughs> yes. Tessa Thompson. No way. Bay. Let's go. Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking. I want to need Janelle Monet. What did you say? I want to need Janelle Monet. I know. Who's my Bay? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> God. I'm looking for a filmography right now. See if anything's coming out. <laughs> All right. You see anything else this week besides uh, playing catch up? I saw Last Flight Flying, Richard Linkler movies. So I guess including catch up because that's all we did this week. That's all we did this week. Yes. Last Flight Flying. I'm really glad I saw it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a it's a good political movie. It really tries to grasp with patriotism in the modern day sense. Um, it's a lot of veterans talking about being betrayed by their country, but they still love their country. It's a very um, it's a very deep movie, and I describe my brother as a good wild hogs because it's oh, it's, it's three very good actors going on like a on a road trip, lack of a better word, and uh, they they knock out the park. Fishburne, Cranston, Carell, outstanding. Uh, I think Peter Travers said, you know what? There's flaws in this movie, but being with being with these three actors for two hours is an absolute treat. That's kind of how I felt about it. It's not Linklater's best, but it's not Linklater's comfort zone adapting a book. But I really did enjoy it. Um, yeah, just from your little uh, description there. I mean, you had me sold until you said Wild Hogs. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but, by, by Wild Hogs, I mean like it's. Older dudes going on a yeah, road trip. Yeah. But I'm really interested in like the concept of like being patriots and like people that are like rah rah for the country, but like are like bad people. <laughs> like kind of thing. Like she that on Twitter all the time, you know? Hmm. But yeah, that's that seems pretty interesting. And I'm, i mean you're a link later guy. I like some link later. But yeah, School actually, of Rock's near your favorite. Yeah, probably one of my yeah. favorite comedies of all time. Yeah. But yeah. Uh yeah. But you sold me on that for sure. It's it's good. Um, it's about three uh, Vietnam veterans. Okay. And it kind of puts a lot of similarities to the uh, war in Iraq and the war in Vietnam, which I would never really connect them. But yeah. everything they say makes sense. There's it, a lot of a why are we there for both of us. Yeah, it's really good. I I'm upset that it didn't get more love. It didn't really hang out in theaters at all. It kind of got a raw deal, but I I see the plot holes in it. But if that intrigues you. Patriotism, especially modern day patriotism. Give it a watch. Logan Lucky. I know you saw Logan Lucky too, yeah. so we should both talk about it right now. A hoot. A- 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 oh, yeah. Absolute a, blast it's watching. It's a great caper. It's a great uh, heist film. If you like Soderbergh, you like Oceans, up your alley. It's it's Oceans set in middle of nowhere, West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, I think Oceans is better. I think it's more well done, but. Lou has a lot of heart. A lot of heart. A ton of fun. Goofy accents. Like, you can tell, like, no one took this very seriously. No. They just had a great time doing it. Great cast with Tatum, Adam Driver, Adam Driver, Chan Tatum's wife. Well, not not wife. Oh, it's not his wife. I looked it up. Not wife. Oh, really? I thought it was. It looked a lot like her. Yeah, it did. Damn. Um, Sebastian Stan, Seth MacFarlane, briefly, and someone else. Million Dollar uh, Baby. What should we call it? Katie uh, Holmes. Million Dollar Baby. Um, <laughs> Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank says we, we, <laughs> we were both stunned. She came in out of nowhere. Yeah, there's a lot of like really quick. Oh, like, and uh, James Bond. Uh, Daniel oh, Craig. Craig yeah, as Daniel Joe Craig's Bang. Here. He was uh, really good in this movie. Super digestible for uh, a lot of people. Yeah, if you have two, it's it's two hours, so it's pretty long. But this is a good Friday night bore. Don't know what to do. Yeah. Put on Logan Lucky. You'll have a really good time watching yeah. it. I'm happy I watched it this year. Me too. And oh, I saw Wood River, but we talked about it a lot. 
Uh, high, six, B. High recommended for all the reasons we said earlier. Yeah, man. This guy can do no wrong at this point. Three for three. Taylor Sheridan. Really damn good. I wish I watched it in better quality just because it's, it's set in a beautiful hmm. part of, of America. And I think Blu-ray or like 4K or a, lot a, of, a big TV would really do this movie some justice. A lot of wide scope shots yeah. of the landscape. Mm-hmm. For me, I watched Wind River, uh, Logan Lucky. I watched Being John Malkovich, uh, the Spike Jones movie. Oh, so yeah, sorry. Spike Jones. I think you said Spike Lee. I've always wanted to watch that. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. And it's not as funny as I thought it would be. Because this movie's been built up, in my mind, for a long time. You, you hear great things about the mm. movie a lot. Catherine Keener is in it. She's great. John Cusack's great. Cameron Diaz is good. Not a lot of John Malkovich, though. Towards the end, you get him a little bit. But, like, I thought it was going to be John Malkovich heavy. And it's not. Hmm. And it's not, it's not really that funny. Funny, and I expect it to be a kind of a comedy. I don't know. It's interesting. I, I think you would like it a lot. It's, uh, yeah. Wouldn't recommend it to everyone. It's weird. Really I, weird. I've been wanting to see that movie since I've seen her. Yeah. I just haven't got to it. I have wanted to watch it for a while. I'm glad I finally got to see it. Spike Jones doesn't make enough movies. He's a very, like, movie once He's a... Sporadic. Twice a decade kind of guy. Yeah. It's, it's too bad. Because mm-hmm. we're still waiting on the next movie since her, aren't we? I think so, yeah. I don't think anything in sight. Come on, Spike. <laughs> Show me your game. I watched uh, Existence, which is a David Cronenberg movie for class. No, don't see it. It's terrible. What it's, movie? Uh, Existence. Never even heard of it. Yeah, no, it's one of his like, lesser-known movies, but it's David Cronenberg, so it's like body horror, like weird transformations and shit. Not for everyone, and it's just, it's poorly acted. It's just, it's very bizarre. I don't think many people would like it. I think Payton might like it, because I think he likes Cronenberg, but I don't know. Not much there. Um, what else did I watch? I think I watched something else. Oh, I watched, um, Ghost Story, which you talked about. Anything on the, uh, horizon for you? I got a recommendation. With Valentine's Day coming up, if you're looking to see a movie on a streaming service, there's only one romance movie you should watch. It is Before Sunrise. I know I've recommended this movie to death, but I won't sleep until everyone sees it. Go watch Before Sunrise. If you're looking for a movie to watch, it's on Amazon. If you're looking for a movie to watch The Significant Other over this weekend... Watch The Big Sick. <laughs> watch Before Sunrise or The Big Sick. Well, the Big Sick's really good, too. It's also on Amazon, but Before Sunrise. It's a, just a beautiful romance movie. It's the first one? Yes. It's a, it's a trilogy. Once you watch the first one, you'll want to watch the next two. Everyone I recommend it to has come back with glowing reviews. It is just so interesting. It's a romance movie that treats the guy and the girl equal. It's relatable from both sexes, and it's outstanding. So It's from Richard Linklater, so I'm biased. You know me, but uh, yep. it's fantastic. Will I watch it this weekend? I might. Now that I recommend it. I feel like I might have to. I really want to finish Calling By Your Name. I did not get a chance to read it all this week. It was a terrible week as far as me being busy. So we're going to introduce a new a new segment kind of thing. It will be individual mini episodes called Movie Rewind, where we drink wine and watch an, a movie from the past. We were going to be watching Ex Machina before Annihilation. It's um, from the guy that did it. Ex Machina. Mike has never seen it. I've never seen it. one of my favorite movies of the, last, of the last decade. My favorite movie of the year that it came out, 2015. So we'll be watching that and drinking wine. It'll be like a 15-minute like episode. We'll release it probably like on like, like a Wednesday or something. It'll be super short. Yeah, but we'll be doing that throughout the year before before movies. We'll be doing, doing it before uh, Isle of Dogs. We'll be doing... Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. So probably, yeah. before like sequels or franchise movies that maybe people haven't seen, we will be doing... Mini reviews before that. Yeah, maybe for Avengers we'll watch a Age Avengers, of Ultron or Age of Ultron, Avengers, Avengers something. One, something. Yeah, we're gonna try to make movies that we haven't seen before, mm-hmm. but it might also come into movies that haven't seen in a while. Haven't seen in a yeah. while. I mean, we might just sporadically throw in a movie a classic that me and Keegan haven't seen. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. If you happen to see him at the same week, we'll, we'll And I don't like really like wine that much, so we'll, I'll have to... I hate wine, <laughs> so this will be interesting. We've got to, got to rename it. <laughs> well, we'll fight through it. Yeah, I'll be watching um, a new show on Netflix as of last week, I believe. It's called Altered Carbon. It's a cyberpunk movie, which is the same genre of Blade Runner. Set in the future, uh, like neon lights everywhere, that kind of thing. I, it's getting kind of crap reviews, but um, my roommate Dan and my friend David highly recommend it. So I will be checking that out this week. I don't know if I'll finish it, but definitely get to it. I love that kind of stuff. Like That setting, I think, is so cool. Uh, there's a game coming out, hopefully this year, called Cyberpunk 2077 that I am juiced for. <laughs> I think that would be really cool. Just, yeah, that, that, that type of world is awesome because ever since I saw Blade Runner, I just want to live in that world. Like, it's... It's so, like, different 
but a blown up proportion of, of our world of advertisements everywhere and that kind of stuff. I think it's really awesome. So yeah, I'll be checking that out. How much do they steal that name from Blade Runner 2049? Altered Carbon? <laughs> Alter Carbon 20... What, what was it? 2077? No, 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 Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. I think that game was announced in 2012. Oh, yeah. It's just taking okay. forever to, to put out, yeah. I mean, you have to set those in the future. You can't set them... Yeah, I know, but yeah. it's funny that you put the date. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I guess other movies. Oh, yeah, Space Odyssey 2000, you know, 2001 Space Odyssey. I mean, I guess it happens. You but... know what's weird about those kind of like, games or movies? There was a, a Street Fighter game called uh, Street Fighter 2012 set in like a weird alternate universe. Set it in like the year 4000. Like, why are you doing it like 25 years in advance? Yeah, they don't go far enough. Never, they never do. In 21, uh, 2001, it's supposed to be like on Jupiter. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is not the case. Yeah, they never... I don't know. That it's was just a scheme so Cooper can work on the technology for the moon landing, though. Wow. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't believe that. I kind of believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that a little bit too much. Like, I'm not going to say I believe it's it. It's very possible. But Especially with the shining light kind of, kind of stuff you put in there. That's why I want 1969, how, how Kubrick learned how to land on the moon. Yeah. Make that movie. I know. It'd be Start that hashtag. Uh, we have a recommendation. Uh, Joe Coop, a uh, friend from high school, recommended Hostels, which is still a gateway. Oh, uh, yeah. He saw it. He said it's pretty, pretty solid. I don't think we'll do an episode on it, just because we have so much stuff in the next few weeks. But, uh, yeah, I think maybe I'll try to see that uh, this week. That might be important for our uh, an award we're going to give out eventually. Don't want to spoil the name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I can spoil no, the name. Yeah, yeah. award for... The, the Donald Gleason Award for Best Year. Best Year. Best Individual Year. Which is going to be our uh, our big award, of, big award the, of, yeah. of the award ceremony. We're planning to release it sometime around the Oscars. I think the day of the Oscars, our personal award show will be, will be dropped. Yeah. Um, we're also going to do an Oscar prediction podcast, and we're doing Black Panther next week. Yes. That's what we have on the horizon. This was a really fun episode. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for participating in it. Yeah. All of our guests and Zim, even though you technically weren't one, and I disagree with a lot of the shit you said. <laughs> you son of a bitch. For the record, though, he didn't have Call Me by Your Name or Get Out on his list. That's true, but he did have fucking. But he had Florida Project. Project. A Florida Project finished sixth. Did it really? God damn it! All right, you know what? You should like the Florida Project. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. They finished fifth. Oh my Top god! Top five, the Florida oh, Project. Sean Beer got robbed. Nope. Everyone, thanks for listening. Check us out on SoundCloud and YouTube and iTunes. Subscribe and, and follow there. Follow us on Twitter at movie underscore rebrew. Instagram, movie underscore rebrew. Untapped, movie underscore rebrew. Leave a comment. Ask a question. We'll try to answer it. Um, follow me at Catch Money Keegan. Mike at underscore Ogle Bay. And we will see you guys next week for Black Panther, a movie we were very excited for. Extremely. Googler, baby. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next week. Yeah. Later, guys. Love you. <laughs> Peace! <laughs> Love you. I'm awesome. Yeah.